in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall beloved in Christ thank you for watching this video if you are new here too I would entreat you to kindly subscribe to this channel for me and then hit on the like button also I would want you to share this message across I would want you to do one thing for us kindly tell us in the comment section where you're watching us from and you've got any testimony for us kindly let us know thank you for watching you don't come to God with an opinion hoping that he agrees with you when you come to him your heart is absolutely open you say Lord I am aware of my vulnerability I'm a product of culture I'm a product of genetic programming I'm a product of environmental conditioning and many of the realities that have held as true though popular though spiritual may not be consistent with your path so I come to you with every open-heartedness, trusting that you will build, you will tear down, you will rearrange and bring order to my life. And that's what God is doing in the name of Jesus. Every time you see consistent results in the life of a man, in the life of a people, in the life of a territory, it is because there is something that is done correctly. Whether or not the practitioners are aware of the dynamics of what they are doing. Are we together? Whether or not the individuals can explain in detail what they are doing or not. The moment you see consistent results regardless of limitations, there are laws, there are principles that are being practiced. Are we together? And uh, I'm going to take it from there. I shared with us a few things, four points in all. We took two. I will begin to take from um, where we left off last week and then we'll continue. Number one, I told us that the key to rising above the vicissitudes of life, rising above the challenges and the things that hold men crippled spiritually, economically, and so on and so forth, the first key is a genuine encounter with Jesus Christ. The first key to becoming relevant is not being educated. The first key to becoming relevant is not having business acumen. It's not even being a leader. Are we together? It's not, it's not any of these things. Success and any kind of impact, a life of notable impact starts from the health and the quality of a man's spiritual life. Say amen. The measure of your impact through God in the kingdom is directly associated with the genuineness of your hunger, the sincerity of your love for God. While we're away on administration in the course of the week, I met a man of God who was at the meeting and he just came to see me and talk to me. And, um, you know, God did great things and honored himself in the meeting. And the man sat down and he began to weep like a baby. And he said, Sir, what is the secret? I don't know how many times people have asked this. What is the secret? And I kept looking at him. And I said, sir, I can bet that you might be disappointed if I tell you. I wish the secret were just fasting and prayer. I wish the secret were just the quality of my word study life. I wish the secret were just that I was anointed. As important as those things are, I told him, if you want me to be sincere with you and you have the heart to receive, the secret to the dimensions that by the grace of God I've been able to access are we together is tied primarily to my passion for God and my sincere desire to see him glorified my passion for God and my sincere desire to see him glorified you've heard me say it and God knows my heart I love God more than ministry I love God more than money I love God more than anointing. I don't use him for these things. Never have and never will. I'd rather give up ministry a thousand times to remain in his presence and to remain in love with him. 
I even love him more than the quest for his presence. This is where I believe many people miss it. Because primarily our motives are corrupted. God for us means many things. For other people, he's just a solution like a charm, like a genie that you use and invoke his name, invoke his blood, invoke his fire, invoke whatever to get results. You're not going to really host extraordinary results that way. Are we together? A genuine encounter with Jesus that births the fear of God in you, that births love for God and love for humanity. It's not enough to love God. You must love the people he has sent to you. And you must love the body. I love the body of Christ with all my heart. I am part of it. I'm proud to be part of it. I love the body of Christ. I may not agree with every perspective in the body of Christ. I may not hold as part of my conviction every opinion and perspective. But it's, it's too little a reason to not love the body of Christ. I love the body of Christ. Regardless of man of God, regardless of denomination, regardless of exploits or setbacks, I genuinely love the body of Christ. Now, let me tell you, when you get to this spiritual state, when you can assume this posture, you are ready to host the grace for transgenerational relevance. Not outside of this condition. The Bible says, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it come into the heart of any man that which God has in store not for them that pray not for them that seek him for them that love him when a man truly falls in love with God and is addicted with his presence his life everything about God becomes an obsession to you his house his life his word everything your whole life is poured as a drink offering then you are ready to rise above every challenge I'm telling you challenges will come upon you, you will rise and shake them off as if they do not exist. Believe me, I know what I'm saying. Are we together? So we discussed that and I said how that many believers, they may be born again, but they've not had a genuine encounter with Jesus. An encounter that is greater than any circumstance. You know, when people doubt God and turn and insult God to his face over situations and circumstances, Lord, I pray for for tea, you didn't give me tea, I prayed for bread, you didn't give me bread, I prayed for CGPA, I prayed for a job, you are not faithful and uh, you know God if you don't do this I will backslide, it's because you've not had an encounter, the remedy for that kind of talk is just an encounter, it's not counseling the remedy is an encounter, there is a way that a man encounters God, that you owe him your allegiance regardless of what happens around your Are we together? It's very important. Whether you bless me or not, I'm in love with you to a point of addiction. Whether ministry rises or not, it has no, it, 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 it does not contribute in any way to influencing my love and my appetite for you. Please, I pray that as you listen to me, this will become a reality. That this will not just become a talk from a preacher. You see, when you are pretending certain things in the kingdom, it will only take time. Time does not change anything, but time is a revealer of motives. Time will reveal whether you genuinely love God or not. The second thing we said that is the key, and I will pick up from here now, that's where we left off last week, is the power of mental transformation. The second key that is required to rise above and beyond the challenges in life. Listen, please. To rise above the limitations that plague mankind. To rise to a life that is of notable transgenerational relevance. A degree of kingdom impact that outlives you if Christ tarries. The power of mental transformation. Listen, I said it. It never, it never tires me to communicate to God's people the extent to which the quality of their paradigm can determine the course of their future in ministry, in life, in business, in marriage, 
in any area at all the quality of your mindset are we together and i told us last week that we are conditioned in two ways basically the first condition is a genetic programming we are programmed genetically by reason of the transfer of traits i'm being very slow and being very detailed because i want us to get this the second which is the most disastrous or most um, notable of the transformations is environmental programming say environmental programming we are programmed environmentally which can be engineered by culture past experiences our levels of exposure the environment that we grew up in chances are that if you never saw a successful person growing up you do not have a reference you see belief is based on a reference are we together you cannot believe vaguely there must be a reference preferably a physical living reference that becomes a standard and the platform upon which your convictions are built this is why the disciples were very powerful jesus was a reference and that's why every leader that must teach people part of the assignment of every leader is not only to communicate his persuasions but to be a reference of the same it is easy for people to believe when there is a measure when a when a leader is in different ways reference worthy it becomes easy for individuals to connect when a man is teaching about the anointing and there is some degree of the demonstration of the power and the grace of God upon his life it becomes easy for the listeners to be persuaded by that dimension are we together it is very difficult listen it is very difficult to persuade people over a reality that your life cannot be a reference of no matter how little the reference is that it is worthy of conviction the same thing i am teaching now i am going to be teaching it 10 15 years to come but it will be more impactful than it is now because by that time my life will be a higher reference than it is now the same way some of the things i'm sharing now were the things that i shared a number of years past but their impact um were not as impactful as it is now of course i've grown in the anointing but also there have been maybe a few evidences here and there that can back up and support that communication communication at communicating a dimension of spiritual reality or a dimension of any reality that does not have your life as a commendable reference is very frustrating this already is a lesson for someone that if you want to change your world the first key is to change yourself that you become a template enough people are not that hardened people are only obsessed with results it is god that sees the heart men look at the outward appearance they want to see that if you are teaching on divine health there is a measure of that reality at work in you if you are teaching on kingdom wealth and prosperity there is a measure of that reality if you are teaching on leadership or excellence or dimensions of kingdom reality there is a level of persuasion that stems from your own experience are we blessed tonight the power of mental transformation the bible says in first peter chapter 1 verse 9 it says receiving the end of your faith we discussed that last week it said even the salvation of your soul the salvation of your soul bringing your soul through the renewal of your mind to a point where it can host the realities that are resident within your spirit i began to discuss with us and we've done this over different series as we've discussed through the years the power of paradigms look at me listen let me tell you something as great as a man is he can limit god remember our scripture that has become an anthem in this place psalm 78 verse 41 they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they limited the holy one they said can god make a table in the wilderness they limited the holy one it was not their fault it was their conditioning after 430 years of servitude with no hope of deliverance it was understandable that such a people as a corporate entity can doubt god 
something about our culture as good as it is something about our cultural experiences have informed us has created an understanding in our minds i was talking to a, a dear friend today who came over to see me and uh, we were discussing certain things he was along the side of uh, the line of marriage and all of that and i was sharing with him uh, you know generally speaking you know we, we got into different discussions and i was telling him that if i were to come to counsel an intended couple I'm not going to waste time asking a lot of useless and vague questions. The first thing I want to examine is their passion for God. And then the next thing I want to examine the extent of their compatibility in terms of their understanding. What is your viewpoint about God? What is your viewpoint about money? What is your viewpoint about your assignment and purpose? What is your viewpoint about your personal life? What is your viewpoint about external influences in your life and home? This does not just apply to the line of marriage. It applies to everything. There is something culture taught us about God. There is something our well-meaning pastors and preachers told us about God. Their experiences were their sermons. They preached it with confidence. We embraced it with sincerity. And we are victims of their limitations. Are we together? There's something that our past experiences have done. I always give an example. If it took someone 10 years to get admission and you teach on favor, it will take an extra anointing for that person to understand that message. Are we together? Because there is no template that represents favor in his life. Most of our families live from hand to mouth. So every time we talk about prosperity, our minds go straight to the people they insulted and the way they insulted them. We have associated prosperity with negativism, with fraud, with, with unseriousness, with fetish, demonic activities, especially when young people are prosperous. And you know, let me tell you something. After listening to a very powerful message, after listening to a powerful series, Financial Dominion, The Wealthy Place, The Economic System of the Kingdom, you will think that your paradigm will change at once. No, it took a long time for it to be built. It will take a repetition, repetition of new ideas are the keys to changing our paradigms. You have, to, you have to bring forth those new ideas again and again. That's why the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing. The next word hearing there is understanding. Hearing and understanding what you hear by the word of God. Hallelujah. Proverbs tells us for as he thinketh in his heart, for as he thinketh in his heart, for as he thinketh in his heart, it didn't say so he will become. It didn't say so he is becoming. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. For as he thinketh in his heart, it equates my physical reality to my life. This is the difference, hear me brothers and sisters, between a CEO who is living in an office with an AC having secretaries and PAs and sitting down and you think he's just writing and then a megad, a, a, a security person who is opening and closing gates in anger and frustration most times a security person is angry, how can I be working so hard and I'm receiving 10,000 per month and someone is there just writing and he's receiving 500,000 and my answer to that frustration is what? Switch them. Switch them for only two weeks. Take the megad. Don't change anything. Don't give him any orientation. Keep him in that office and take the CEO to the gate. Let me tell you what will happen after two weeks. People will stop going to the office. The CEO will do something to that gate that will make the customers remain there. Are we together? His hospitality his open-heartedness, his calmness, his people skills, and all of these other factors that are important for success will compel the people to love him and remain there. Let's go to our man in the office. I know what he will be doing. Drinking all the juice in the fridge as fast as he can because something about his mind tells him you are, you are certainly not going to be here for a long time. Then he looks for what to steal. He signs documents anyhow. And then he crosses his leg watching TV. Changing channels. 
enjoying the AC. Probably texting all the people and saying, my life has changed. The place will be dirty. I assure you, he will not empty the waste bin. He doesn't have that frame of excellence. His paradigm of excellence is not that way. He will destroy everything. He will misplace documents, scatter them and wonder why they are arranged accurately. At the end of it, he will be frustrated. He will steal something sizable and run away. That will be the end of that. Another popular example. You wore a shirt for one year. It was always clean and iron. Nobody knew it was one year old. And you gave somebody and his mindset rubbed off on the shirt. In one month, he turned a white shirt to brown. Have you seen people like that? Yeah. Listen. Our physical environment is but a looking glass. You never change your physical reality by arguing and trying to change things. It's not even by trying to dress well. And, no, 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 no. It's a culture. You've got to change your mind. So the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5, permit this mind to be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I was not born this way. I re-engineered myself using the word of God and following those who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Are we together? You must be disloyal to any understanding and paradigm that has given demon spirits access points to destroy your life. Hallelujah. Paradigms. There are people who will use a water system toilet, a very clean toilet, and finish. I mean in a house, not even the one in the hostels. A clean toilet. They enter the bathroom, they saw everything clean. They use it and leave it there and just go out smiling. And they tell you I've finished. They took their mindsets there. Their mindsets took them there. Are we together? Yeah. There is something about excellence. As obvious as it should be, you must be trained to discern it. Don't ever assume that because your mindset has changed, it is so. That's the reason why the higher you rise, the more you must have a greater capacity for patience. Because when your mindset changes, you wonder, sometimes I look at people and I am amazed the way they think. Certain things that should be so obvious, you are wondering how their mindset can veer off and give them such suggestions. The power of paradigms. Are we together? A man can come to you, someone can come to a Jimmy for instance, and sit down and look at him and look at his house and see how God has blessed him and then just look at him and say sir don't be offended anything for the boys and you are wondering you have access to a great man what is there to say sir if you were to be at my age what would you advise me to do or if you would be at my level in life what two things do you think I should focus on now we never ask questions have you seen people who have access to great men one guy came to my hotel room in Abuja and he came just because of his friend. He wouldn't even come. He came there because of some well, a senior, someone like a mentor to him who is my friend. They came to greet me. When they said hello, we're discussing, I served them myself. I'm telling you, before anybody picked the thing, the guy carried the, the something and opened it and was taking it. Whereas the person, his mentor now kept quiet and was listening. You see why that guy is his mentor? Are we together? There is a logic to people's frustration. You can trace it and see why they are where they are. Paradigms. Mindsets. Why should I dress well? Um, do, am I rich? Paradigm. Are we together? There are people praying endlessly to have pot belly. Just like that. Why? Because based on certain cultural experiences. Now listen, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm teaching here. There are cultures, am I right? That train people. The moment they see you with some level of weight, they say, ah, this is, things are working. But you know that absolutely nothing is working. Paradigms. That's what informs people to live fake lives. There are people who if God blesses with 50,000 now, their mindset tells them, look, you need to do something around you to make people believe you belong. 
so they run away and blow up everything and they come to people and you see sometimes let me tell you something when i meet people who are greater than me i have no pressure to prove any point because i know i'm stupid when i'm doing it but then you see a lot of people with their little understanding small results here and there they come and they never learn they are trying to impress you but to me i'm a business person i just read robert kiyosaki's book and you are watching his ignorance that act alone is a revelation of where you are because great people are silent let her works speak for her at the gates and so when we we're done let me finish up my story they were about to go i was greeting them you know and then the gentleman just came to me and said sir please just one favor i said what is it say let me snap with you and i looked at him i said this this boy is not wise honestly speaking that's why we must crave for wisdom i said this this guy is not smart one bit i said all right that's okay he snapped with me about three hours later my friend called me and said the guy posted a picture on facebook that me and my very good friend apostle joshua selma now hold on i'm not insulting him he may even be listening now listen listen do you know that gentleman thinks is by snapping with me so that every other person around look let me tell you if a billionaire wears slippers and kaftan and you wear suit and stand close with him something about you will tell you you are not yet ready for this place if Benny Hinn stands today and I side, side by side with him and they say colleagues in ministry, even me I know, God knows, the devil knows that we are not colleagues. They will snap me standing when you watch the picture, it, I will be kneeling down. Because the reality of my heart <laughs> will reflect itself. Amen. Say paradigms. Say mindsets. Say programmings. Something that your parents held was responsible for their limitations, culture, experiences. Are we together? I don't want to be ahead of myself because the third thing I'll be talking about is where we'll dwell today in details. And um, I trust that God will change our mindsets. Now, let me tell you something. There is nothing God can do about your life as powerful as he is if you are not willing to change your mindset. Lord, I want, you, I want you to bless me. And God says, okay, can you allow me work on you? There's nothing wrong with you. God says, all right, you can have it. There is a mindset that is responsible for poverty. There is a mindset that has, keep, has kept many men of God limited in life and ministry. There are certain mindsets that have, have kept corporate organizations small. Sometimes I wish that I knew the things I've learned in the last two, three years, maybe that I knew them 10, 20 years ago, I would have been 100 times without exaggerating higher than I am now. I pray that you will receive these things and you will believe them. In one minute, lay your hand on your head and say, Lord, there is something in my mind that is responsible for my limitations. Please take it out of me. Go ahead and pray. Take it out. Take it out of me. There's something. I grew up in Nigeria and there is a way Nigerians are lovely people. They are great people. But there is a faulty paradigm Take it away from my life. Take it away from my life. I declare my disloyalty to every paradigm, no matter how long I have held it. A paradigm that has stopped me from accessing the anointing. A paradigm that has stopped me from being a leader. A paradigm that has stopped me from being a visionary person. A paradigm that has stopped me from being wealthy. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Alright, so let's take today's own. The third key. Key number three. To rising above recession. Key number three. To rising above any kind of limitation. Is the discovery and the development of your value 
and your abilities. I'm going to dwell here. There is a lot to talk about here. The discovery and the development of your abilities, your value. I've done a lot of teachings and I have taught again and again how that a man's relevance, please listen to me, a man's relevance is not based on chance. It's not based on some kind of sentiment. The disparity, the, the stratification between the wealthy, between the great, the anointed, the influential, among many other reasons, primarily is their value. Write this down, please. Your value is a representation of your worth. Your value is a representation of your worth. W-O-R-D. Your value is a representation of your worth. Based on the solutions you provide, the problems you solve, and the lives you transform. Your value is a representation of your worth based on the solutions you provide, the problems you solve, and the lives you transform. This is the index for measuring a man's value. So when we say a person is valuable, a preacher is valuable, a businessman is valuable, a leader is valuable, please listen to me. We're not necessarily just talking about um, anything vague or anything fetish. A measure of the perception that people have over you on the strength of the solutions that you provide. On the strength of the problems that you solve. And on the strength of the lives and destinies that you transform. Put it in another way. If you are not providing any kind of solution, if you are not solving any kind of problem, and if you are not contributing to the transformation of the lives and destinies of people, you are not valuable. And hear me, please. Relevance and wealth in the kingdom is built on a reward system. We've said it again and again. Let me just do a recap on it. I'll touch a bit into that. Right? You can get the message, the wealthy place. Write this down. This is the fundamental law that governs wealth and abundance and governs greatness in the kingdom. Our rewards in life, and that reward can be financial, the sense of security, the sense of honor that we receive, whatever it is. Our rewards in life will always be in exact proportion to number one, the demand or the need for what we do. Number one, the demand or the need for what we do. Number two, our ability to do what we do. Number three, the difficulty in replacing us. My relevance in life, my relevance as a man of God is not just tied to God. The demand for what I do, my ability to do what I do, and the difficulty in replacing me. Let me tell you, when you understand this, you can accurately gauge why you are where you are right now. This is why pastors are wealthy. Listen, pastors think they are wealthy. I was teaching the school of ministry, uh, school of ministry students. And I said, many men of God think they are rich because they are serving God. That's not the reason why people are wealthy. It's based on a law. If I am blessed today, among other reasons, it's based on the perception that you and other people around this nation and in certain parts of the world have about me, which is on the strength of what I do, my proficiency in doing it. Are we together? A man of God is not rich because he prayed for the sick. A man of God is rich because he's providing solutions. His solution may be supernatural in origin. The solution may be spiritual. When you connect people to Jesus Christ, you are providing an eternal solution to the predicament of men. 
and the system of God's economy was designed that every time you dispense value, whether given for free or sold, a reward must come to you. A reward must come to you. The laws are inflexible. You cannot change them. So for as long as there is an anointing upon me to bring people to the place of encounter, for as long as there is an anointing upon me to birth transformation of the minds and destinies, for as long as there is an anointing to birth revival, to bring miracles, signs and wonders, I remain valuable as far as God is concerned and the benefactors. Let me tell you why that is powerful. Much more than business. It is an intrinsic value. Value that is not dependent on any external environment. And value that is rewarded only based on the perception of the benefactors. So one person can bless me with 100 naira as a representation of his comprehension of my value. Another person can bless me with 10 million as his comprehension of the perception of my value. Don't say I am poor. Don't say I am mediocre. What value are you bringing to the table of destiny? Call this stage the table of greatness. There are enough seats for everyone, but your past is your value. Your past is your value. Not just any value. Values that are needed and useful. Values that are needed and useful. Applicable to the predicament of your generation. God is helping someone. Are we together? What have you brought to the table of greatness? That author, you, you know, listen, listen. Do you know why they call people thieves and fraud? Because you see rewards, but you do not see the value that is commensurate to that reward. That's why we hate armed robbers. An armed robber brings a gun. And says, give me your one million. And you tell him, what is the value? He says, I have no value, but I have a gun to threaten you. So it is bad. But that same one million, you will give it to someone who offers a value that is worth it. Listen, you don't sit down and wish to rise. You grow in value to the level that matches what you desire. Frank Edward ministers and based on the perception of his value, someone can bless him with 10 million, whereas there is another musician somewhere in Samaru who may be moving around and nobody will bless him. What is the difference? Their value. Your value is a representation of your worth based on your ability. There are two dimensions to value. I want to talk a bit about value. Number one is intrinsic value. Write it down. Intrinsic or inherent value. Value that came with you. It was a gift from God to you. Part of your packaging and part of your wiring. It can be improved upon. Hallelujah. Are we blessed this night? I really want to challenge you. Look at me, please. Please do not trivialize what I'm teaching you. God is not a herbalist. This is the key that lifts men above recession. I was talking to one of our ladies. She works in the bank. And um, I was talking to her this morning. And I told her, I said, how is it going in the bank? I said, Kai, things are, are really bad for many people. Though. But she said, there are some. I said, that's right. In my mind, I said, that's me. You are now talking about me. He said, there are some, their lives have increased and multiplied. Do you know the concept of recession is not supposed to apply to an individual? Recession only makes sense when you look at it from a corporate and a territorial perspective. There was famine in Samaria minus the king. Minus the king. Number two, minus Elijah. All the people, Elisha never said, please, even Elijah begged for bread. Elisha did not beg for bread in Samaria. 
he came gallantly and saw people eating their children. The other one said, we ate my child yesterday. We said, let's boil this other child and the woman refused. Are we together? Prophet, we boiled my child yesterday. When I was eating my child, we ate together. Now it's the turn to eat her own child and they refused. And the prophet said, no. Let me tell you something. Your value vetoes your education. Your value vetoes your cultural background. Your value vetoes any limitation. I don't care what it is. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Will you open up the gates? Open up the doors. Listen. Believe me, brothers and sisters, when I tell you your value vetoes a lot of things. Sunday at Delaja, 96% of his membership in a communist nation, right? Ukraine, a communist nation, 96% of his members are white in a communist nation. Value. The key to eradicating a sense of unworthiness is not criticizing great people. This is what a lot of pastors go through. This is what a lot of business people go through. This is what a lot of individuals go through. They think the key is resentment and anger and hatred. No, the key is to pay the price of discovery and developing your value. A student comes in, backtrack five years, six years, a naive young person, probably in his teenage comes into an institution. I want to study medicine. Not even having an idea of what he wants to do. Are we together? Or the implication. And he goes through five, six, probably seven years of recross training. They never change his skin. They never change his clothes. They only change his mind. And after six, seven years, a panel of people will test him and accredits the fact that he is worthy of being called a doctor and they issue a little piece of paper that becomes his authorization value I am surprised when many people say why am I poor what kind of question is that why am I poor why am I suffering the recession and I, I mean no disrespect as I communicate this Everyone is left to his lot. If Bill Gates, for instance, let me use finances. If Bill Gates comes here right now and says, everybody, go and hold someone whose life you changed. If you can hold five people, you receive a million dollars. Some of us will roam to everybody. You touch somebody, you say, I will slap you. You've not added any value to my life. Why, why do you want to hold me? I have never been blessed, not by your wisdom, not by your spiritual life, not by your anointing, not by your academics. Nothing about you has changed me. But there are others, there will not be enough room. Everybody says, you changed me. You changed me. You blessed me. You advised me. My business is flourishing because of the idea you gave me. That sickness in my body left because of the anointing upon your life. The power of your secret place changed my life. You preached a message and brought a dimension that changed me. Problem solved. Solutions provided. Lives transformed. And there is a reward waiting for you. I guarantee you. No witch and no wizard from any village and anywhere has the power and the capacity to stand an individual that has walked upon his value. What is my value? What is my gift? What is that ability that can bail me out? Let me tell you something. And I'm, I'm a Nigerian. I want to say something that is very serious right now. I'm a Nigerian. I love Nigeria. I love everyone in this country. We are brothers and sisters. Are we together? But listen. Do you know why? I want to be sincere with you. Do you know why a lot of people are suffering this recession now? 
I know many people think he's Buhari. Others think he's Jonathan. Other people think he's PDP, APC. I'm not a politician. Are you together? Let me tell you. Something about the nosediving of the oil revealed that we have never truly been valuable as a people. We only receive natural resources and we have been covering it for years. The same way to happen to your destiny. I'm in a, a department. They give everybody food free of charge. So I think, let me tell you, you do not generalize impact and success. You must be sure what parts you are contributing. Otherwise, you'll be ashamed with time. We are worship team. We are all great. But in all sincerity, what is your unique contribution? One day you hold the mic alone. And on that day, we know that you are the one limiting the worship team. On that day, we know, ah, so that mistake in the keyboard comes from you. We have been managing it, but right now, we are a group of intelligent lecturers. We are all intelligent people. The day you have to do a presentation as a person, life must single you out one day to defend yourself. I belong to an anointed ministry, great and wonderful. We are shaking the world. I agree with you. A day will come, you will stand before the sick. Apostle, I'm not there. Ejimi, I'm not there. My head of department, prayer, ushering, decoration, they are all not there. On that day, that's when you will know whether the impartations you've been receiving or otherwise. Life will challenge it. Life will test it. And until you are able to prove it, the disciples kept enjoying corporate success until one day when Jesus climbed up the Mount of Transfiguration, they were happy. They brought an epileptic person. They said, don't worry about Jesus. We are here. Just keep him down. They struggled. They were embarrassed. Nothing happened. Let me tell you. Do you know what causes jealousy? The ease and the flawlessness that someone who has paid the price to be valuable does on something you have been frustrated about. You've been praying on a sick body and you gave all kinds of reasons. No, this person cannot be sick. Then the person comes for a meeting and even without being prayed for, before the opening prayer, he's healed. And then the person testifies exactly as it happened. You know how people testify? They will say it the way it happened. May God make you to, be, to develop an appetite to be valuable. An appetite to be valuable. Let me tell you how you know you are really valuable. When no monetary value placed on you becomes a burden to the giver, you are exceptionally valuable. Listen. Listen. I can't remember how much this is, how much they bought it. But let's assume this is 300,000. Just an assumption. Right? Assume that this pulpit is 300,000. When they call the price, what do you do? You look at it, the material, the quality, and it says, okay. If they look at this and say, bring 10 million, you look at it and say, no. That's the same way they rate you. So you say 20,000, they say you are telling the truth. Then you say 100,000, they say for where? Is money free like that? But there are others, they don't even say anything. Their value says any amount, priceless, 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 priceless. And so someone brings 10 million and says, sir, please don't be offended. It's a privilege for me to do this. May you be such a person. May you be such a person. Hallelujah. Benihin is coming to Nigeria and the plans that have, in fact, to a point that the very ministry that is bringing him does not even have absolute control over his coming again. The Christian bodies have had to come in because they sat and said, no, 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 no. We are going to come in. Now, he's not only ministering in Lagos. He's also going to worry to go and minister in a crusade. Again. Say valley. Yeah. When Benihin enters a, a nation, no matter who is inviting, uh, inviting him, he's received by the ambassador of the America and a presidential delegation. So his coming is not something you wake up and come by mistake. Even if he's trolling, his personality, we call it human capital. My desire 
is that under God, myself and this great ministry will be so valuable. This place has become like a place of pilgrimage right now. The protocol has had to start making arrangements with hotels around. Why? Because every week, groups are coming, individuals are coming from all over the nation. It's called value. If we remain at this level, we will never rise. But if we keep rising by the Spirit of God and through determination, a time will come, somebody will come from another state, another nation, and say it's a privilege, finally. Are you that valuable? Are you that valuable that your absence is an interruption to somebody's life? Are you so valuable? I'm speaking to you from the depth of my heart. Then you will know why certain... The money we are saying has left Nigeria did not disappear. Money is like energy. It can neither be created nor destroyed. It is transferred. So it leaves from the point of no value, passes through the place of small value, and lands in the place of capital value. Say amen. Wanting something for nothing is fraud. Wanting something for nothing is wickedness. Now let me tell you how many of us approach it. Oh God, will you keep looking at me like this? And God says, I've been looking. I set laws and I put preachers. He said, let them come back to, to life. Remember the prayer of, of, of who? The rich man. Let them come back to life. He said, no, they have the prophets and the law. If they will not listen to them, even if somebody comes back to the dead, they will not listen. Just like there are people God has anointed, but many people will not listen. Why should you fail in life? Your background? Who told you it's because of your background? There are people today with no arms, but they are valuable. There are people with no legs, they are valuable. There are people with no eyes, they are valuable. There are people who cannot speak. They are valuable. We don't love Jesus just because he's the son of God. He's really valuable. He's an expression of infinite value by every standard. Are we together? Any man can determine his lot in life. Any man. Your reward is in exact proportion. But apostle, I'm a graduate and now I'm working. I'm getting 50,000. But now I'm married to a wife and three children. That's the limit of your value. Because your education was never designed to fund your assignment. It was designed to help you. You are only working at the limit of what you know. And if you do not know more, you will remain that way. Yesterday, um, one of the protocol, he, he usually helps me. If they, if they need to fix anything in my car, he helps me. And um, I was going to drop him, and I decided to just take a stroll with him. I like talking to people. I decided to take a stroll with him and then to turn and come back. And I was talking to him. I said, do you know why you are in this car now? And he looked at me. I said, there are so many people in Zaria. You can drive, and you have loyalty and integrity. It's called value. It end you the right here. When we stop, let me confess, we went to buy suya. Praise God. <laughs> and so, while they were ordering the suya, I made an order of the suya and he was sitting. I said, do you know why you are sitting close to me now? He said, no, sir. I said, value. You are the one who went to fix the car. It gave you the privilege to do it. I told him, do you know why we are not in a filling station now? He said, no. He said, because the tank is full. The day it finishes or gets more, we will need the Philly station. Are we together? Why have I not come to you? Why have I not called you? You don't call me. Why should I? Why should I? You are proving as if I'm nothing. You made yourself so. There is a way you make yourself. There are people who cannot even pick calls. There are others who are angry. Aaron, I don't like what you are doing. Haba. Is it because God has lifted you now? You left us. That's always what they say. I intend to rise. Whoever intends to rise with me 
then we move together. I cannot love you so much to be so loyal and keep myself low. I'm telling you why many of us are offended with so many people. Offended, my friend, we used to eat together, but you were not doing the same thing. Now the person has risen. You call the person and a secretary picks. Hello, sir, so so and so, so organization. Please let me talk to him, Jare. Tell him my name is uh, Ajayi. You don't know me again. And you are shouting and raking and getting angry. May God make you so valuable. Listen to me. Listen to me. May God make you so valuable that your value transcends territories. Because there are values that are only, there are people, that's what we call local champion. One who is valuable within a territory. And so when you step out to another territory, you are as inert as somebody whose potentials is not as worth. But there are certain people, even celebrity musicians, even if they step out by mistake, everybody is snapping them, they have to run. Now, they may be going to hell. Are we together? But as far as value is concerned, generally speaking, they are communicating value. It's just the content of their music that is demonic. Their vocal training is excellent to a fault. Now you come on stage and you say, I want to rise. What are you calling to? I'm calling to the police. Really? Yes. What have you done so far? I've been, you know, a gentleman came and met me one time and he came and he said that he's looking for sponsors. I said, what for? That, that he wants to produce an album. I said, who is mentoring you? He said, nobody. I said, who have, can you play any instrument? He said, no. I said, who has ever approved, genuinely approved of your music? He said, no. I said, I'm not going to help you. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm really helping you by not helping you because I'm, I'm helping you realize the mistake fast. Hallelujah. You have won the victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah, you have won it all for me. Listen, can't you see that this is God's bailout system? I came from a background where we were living in a hut with mud. The, the mud is not in your mind. The mud is not in your mind. Jesus was born in Nazareth. They said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? He broke that limit. Stop giving excuses. Make up your mind from today. There is something my world can celebrate. Years ago, when I was staying in a little room, praying and reading books, all my money went to buying books. Buy the truth and sell it not. God, you have given me grace for music and worship. Who can invite me because of the grace I carry? Don't flatter yourself in mediocrity. Challenge yourself based on a reference that is global. Don't flatter yourself. You make mistakes, you sing off key, and someone says, Kai, you know, Elijah, this is fantastic. You say, really? No, you didn't do well. You didn't do well. We were glorified because of the anointing but vocally speaking, you didn't do well. This lack of preparedness is what makes people to mock themselves. Any competition they hear around, they will come. Have you seen people like that? And they say, why are you here? They say, I'm here to win. And you watch the, your competitors. Just by looking at them, you see the flawlessness of their preparation. And just the preliminary screening, you are back home. And then he said, no, in Nigeria, this is because this person is Yoruba. That's why they didn't take me. No, sir, you are not good. Be honest with yourself. It's, I'm not saying you cannot be good. Listen, value is only valuable when competence is added to it. Value only becomes valuable when competence is added to it. Yesterday, I was studying on diamonds. I just decided to study on diamonds. I didn't know that there were different kinds of diamonds, different kinds. And I was seeing the diamonds and the, the recall in finding them. And I mean their structure, the, the precision of their structure is what makes them valuable. 
are you competent are you competent seest thou a man diligent in his ministry diligent in his business it's only a matter of time you may be soaking gary now but diligence is like a plane it will lift you beyond the limitations it can be raining and you just take a flight and within one minute you are already out of that rain you are not even aware that it's raining again until you land koinonia i'm challenging you i will be a wicked preacher I will be a wicked man of God to not challenge you in the area of value because that's what I'm doing with my life. And by the grace of God and in all sincerity, that's what has brought me where I am. And I told you, where I am now is my preparation of yesterday. Tomorrow will reveal to you what I'm doing today. Value always precedes manifestation. So when you see a man manifest, that's not his true state. It is his passive state based on your seeing him now. In business, in ministry, there are many pastors who don't know how this thing works. And they may never find out. There are many people who don't know how this thing works. I'm sorry to say, but look at Zaria as a case study. Almost every business in Zaria, almost, not all, but almost every business in Zaria is tainted by mediocrity, smallness, average. There's, there's nothing world class. There's, there's no touch of excellence in it. We are limited because of our culture. I have my small shop. This is nice. We never learn. Someone has paid the price and made the mistake for you. Then you make it again. No, you must learn from other people's mistakes. Are we together? I have hardly seen things in this city, and I say it with all humility, that have impressed me to know that this is at a level of a global repute. From our hotels, are we together? To our restaurant services, in fact, for the most part, they are terrible. Yet there are many of us seated here. If I ask you now, what did you say? I've been cooking. You are the only one who has not eaten. The fact that I've not eaten your food means nobody has recommended it. And that means they've been flattering you by saying it's sweet. If food is delicious, we are not stupid people. A Jimmy's wife makes cakes. Everybody knows. She's not necessarily done any great marketing. Let her works speak for her the greats. What is so exceptional about what you do? What do you do that will make me feel like I am losing a lot if I don't partner with you? Everybody say competence. Say it, competence. Say it again, competence. Listen, if you pay attention to what I'm saying, you will reap an endless, you will reap an endless benefit. Favor then is when preparedness. The day God wants to bless you, he will station your destiny helpers close to you. Men and women who have the perception and the strength to reward your value. And then he says, now you have prepared yourself. There are too many, you know the problem with many of us, look at me. This, 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 this pressure for recognition. I want to know that I'm a CEO. I said it, I think it was to the School of Ministry students. People write books after 10, 20 years of a track record. But in Nigeria, people write books to start up what they are doing. So someone who has nothing writes 81 keys to the billionaire lifestyle. A book is an authorization for men to listen to you based on a result that is obvious in your life. You are documenting your persuasion to create a track for people to follow. Years ago, a few, well, they are not really my friends, but they are ministers too. They met me and said, Apostle, at your level, there are some bishops who are not like you. You should be on TV and radio. I said, I hear. 
so that I will get to a point where I'm limited and I have to beg for partners. Isaiah 77, give me Isaiah 61, give me 61 naira or 610 naira. I don't want to do all those things. I don't want to stand on air playing gimmicks. I want a situation where the day koinonia comes on air, someone will say, this is what I've been looking for. I have, I have one, I mean, I have a business that is producing $10 million every month. I've been looking for a ministry to sponsor. This is it. Solutions provided. Problems solved. Lives transformed. And you enter your Sabbath at once. Please hear me, koinonia. And all those following, not everybody is a victim of this recession. I tell you the sincere truth from the depth of my heart. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. I say it with all humility and not in any boastful way. The finance of this ministry has skyrocketed in a way and a dimension that is really covering this year more than any year put together. Now, please, I'm sorry if it looks like I'm boasting. I'm only challenging you in a time we call recession. Say something I do not know. Say it again. Something I do not know may be responsible for my limitation. One of my pastor friends started bus transport, bus services. And he called me. He said, Apostle, I can't believe this. You've been transporting people on bus services and we're not so much in our church. Just at one junction where everybody will wait. After one month, we looked at when they sent the report. I said, nobody, it trekked from wherever you are coming. And we've done this without fail. Not for Friday's program. Anytime this ministry is holding any program, once it is night, we're a responsible ministry at any time whether it was planned or not brothers and sisters there is something that is being done this is where i'm taking you to it was not like that our first crusade they were almost locking me because of 150,000 aaron whereas the money that is circulating now was still there i have learned through pain i have learned through mistakes i've learned through mentorship and you are receiving it for free i pray that you will treasure it and I pray that it will lift you higher than ever. Some of you are about to get married. You know you are not ready. Are we together? You already know, not by revelation, by wisdom that your wife is going to suffer. You know that your children are going to suffer. How do I know that there is no plan? Dotham was, became mighty because he prepared his way before the Lord. show forth. Prepare. Everybody say prepare. Prophesy to yourself. Say myself. Prepare. Myself. Be competent. Myself. Work on yourself. Hallelujah. Prepare. Don't make noise. Don't take this colleague mentality moving around. I used to know you, Pastor Femi. We are fellow pastors. Colleague mentality is the key to the undoing of many people. Oh, we were classmates. The same class. The same university. The same this. The, we are both doctors. We are both professors. No, no, no. The Bible says one star different from another in glory. Say in the name of Jesus. There is a, an ability say there is a gift within me that is greater than Zaria greater than Nigeria there is an intrinsic value within me that can bless me that can bless the kingdom and I will search it out hallelujah there is an intrinsic value now intrinsic value has to do with value that is inherent the only thing you do is to develop it is there. I'll give you an example. Intellectual property is an intrinsic value. You don't refrigerate it. You don't warm it. You don't keep it in a safe, in a bank. 
is there is there you've trained your mind intelligence intellectual property is there he's playing this keyboard now this is intrinsic value is value within him value that does not depend on the external environment for its performance are we together now yeah. a photocopy machine is not an intrinsic value the machine needs a demand the machine needs a lot of things the machine needs light are we together the greatest way to rise is to walk first on your intrinsic value you have the grace to sing work on it you are an entrepreneur work on it don't say i'm a ceo ceo that is not producing results is a sign to sit down say i'm a potential ceo there are people moving all around with complimentary cards and flattering themselves i am this and that and that i'm into real estate agro allied products and so on and so forth we have branches in in, in ghana Benin republic Port Lagos, and so on and so forth. And you look at the person who is talking. You ask him, sir, what do you know about real estate? He said, look, that's not the most important thing. Me, I'm telling you, my father did it, he gave me, and he has one plot of land somewhere. You see, we, we mock ourselves. Packaging is only meaningful when there is content. Packaging is only meaningful when there is content. Packaging without content is like a balloon. You hold a balloon and claim that the balloon is, is a metal. You will just touch it and it will burst. I sing better than many people who are called into the music ministry. Yet, they want me to buy their album. No. I told you last week, there are many people who claim they can cook. They have restaurants. Are we together? And you start bullying people and say, ah, shouldn't you come and eat in my restaurant? I saw you the other day. Ella, you should come to my restaurant to eat. Are we not fellow koinonia people? She wants to be healthy. She wants to be healthy. And as far as it is concerned, you have not worked on yourself. One of our school of ministry ladies, uh, um, she made one beautiful work, just a beautiful artwork. The students saw it. I mean, she's here. Very fantastic artwork. And when I saw it, I said, my goodness, this is excellent. I told her, improve yourself and monetize your value monetizing your value is the last thing you do when it is flawlessly competent then you place a price on it are we together now i want everybody to write write three things you know god has put in you that must be developed and deployed please write it down young old write it down type it right do whatever it is please write it down don't flatter yourself don't write what you don't have just patiently think and you'll find your own. Don't just write because your neighbor wrote something. Value. Value. Aaron is here. He handles most of the logistics of the, you know, people around, different kinds of logistics. Why? Because he's worked on himself and he's still working on himself. The other day I went to his house and I saw a blackboard close to his, uh, just a little like dining or thereabout and his little office that he has and I saw him writing goals I saw targets I saw plans of action I said this is excellent this person is going to go far please do not think discovery simply means it is worthy of reward that you have discovered a thing does not mean they will reward you it must be developed to the highest level of excellence and then communicated with integrity, communicated with discipline and communicated with the anointing. Hallelujah. I met a pastor and the pastor told me something. He said, man of God, if you, he's quite an elderly man. He said, if you continue going the way you are going, you are going to have such an exceptional ministry. I said, thank you, sir. I intend to. And that's why I seek people like you to add to my life. I am not ashamed of my ignorance. I'm not ashamed of my limitations and the things that I do not know. There are many things I do not know. 
I know some, but there are many others. If I knew them, I would not be where I am. And I humble myself to seek for knowledge. I see the way people trivialize knowledge and trivialize the sacrifices of others. Are we together? You call somebody you perceive to be valuable and then you tell the person, when can I come and meet you? Or when can you come and meet me? And the person says, why? He says, I have a business proposal. I want us to rob minds together. Sit down with your broke, bad attitude and you will never rise. Never, never rise. There's so many people who do that. Why am I challenging you? I want you to rise beyond the recession. You've heard the testimonies of people. This money has not flown anywhere. This greatness has not flown anywhere. The concept of recession to an individual is a mirage. Hear me. Please hear me. I understand business. I'm not daft. I'm not stupid. I know what I'm saying. The concept of recession is not supposed to be explained from an individual platform. It is when you look at the economy territorially, societally, then you can say based on the GDP of a nation, based on certain indices, a nation, when it does not meet certain things, then there is a, a recession. There is inflation or whatever it is. But not an individual. There has been no time in the Bible where famine affected everybody. There, were, there, there has always been exemption. Those who offer value are the ones who are exempt. Please hear me. What gives you the justification that between today, Friday, and next Friday, something would have entered your hand? Or I'm not necessarily just saying money. Somebody would have acknowledged the fact that God is using you to bless you. My life has been transformed. What value do you have? You see, the anointing does two things. It activates something within you that was not there and amplifies something within you that is there. It activates something within you that was previously not there or introduces a better word. Introduces something within you that was not there like the healing grace, right? Like revelation, the capacity, utterance. But then it also amplifies something that is there, like creativity, like leadership, like your gift. So number one, your encounter with God that produces a fear of God in you. Number two, a transformed mind. Transform beyond your cultural limitations. Number three, the discovery and the development of your abilities, your value. Please do not forget this. Greatness, wealth, any kind of achievement in the kingdom is based on a reward system. It's not just the issue of the will of God. The issue of the will of God as far as our greatness is concerned is not a mystery. It is clear in the word. I know the thoughts that I think towards you said the Lord Jeremiah 29 and the 11th chapter. Thoughts of good and or peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 It shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command thee this day right? That you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. There is always a part you have to play. There is a part that I have to play. Huh? Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 this book of the law he says shall not depart from out of thy mouth he says but thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein then he says then only then shall thou make thy way prosperous and you shall have good success success that does not steal away the time of your family success that does not steal away your life. Are we together? Give me five, ten minutes. Let me talk a little. Let me take point three a little more. Write this down, please.
I know that I've taught a lot about finances, but let me just talk for five, ten minutes on a few things about our financial life. Number one, let me tell you something. A job alone will limit you. I want to, I want to expand your horizon and work on your creativity a bit. A job alone will limit you. Brothers and sisters, no matter how much of a job you get, no matter how great of a job you get, a job does not have the capacity to fund your assignment. Your needs are plenty. Family needs. The average African family has siblings that are looking up to you for assistance. It's capital intensive to live in Nigeria. To send children to school. Almost all of us here, by the time you are a Christian and you are born again, you have commitments to your church, to your group, to your ministry. And part of it is financial commitment part of it there are several things you have to do that take money from you you are broke let me give us a little financial intelligence we'll always add this you are broke anytime your inflow is far far less than your outflow it, it is it is it, it you will always without fail be on deficit one naira comes into your life you need four naira to go out of your life. You will be in trouble. You will have to be in trouble. You cannot be earning 50,000 naira, probably 100,000, and believe that that in itself, you remove tight, you remove a lot of things. It is just not enough. That's the challenge with our parents. 100,000 was enough when they had one child. Now they, had, they have five children, but their finances have not increased. So it's pinning them and straining them to death. Are we together? What then is the solution? Activate other streams of income. 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 Don't sit down running around and say there's no job. And I don't mean don't do small mediocre things that waste your time, your energy, your money, and then at the end nothing comes out from it. Activate streams of income. Work on your mindset. Monetize your intrinsic value that is being developed. You will rise above recession, I tell you. Are we together? Did you know, for instance, did you know, for instance, every week we rent chairs in the dozens. During the miracle service, we rent thousands of chairs in the dozens. That's someone's business. Are we together? That's someone's business every week there are things only in this ministry alone that can make an individual a millionaire if he knows how to create a system around that value and supply it just i mean just koinonia alone please activate streams of income take responsibility for your life and don't give people anything substandard you are you are insincere and you are ungodly when you wet the appetite of people over a value you know you cannot offer don't be that insincere make sure that you have worked on yourself and you are competent enough then you can open up your hands for value don't collect a contract to help somebody roof his house and then you roof nonsense no don't do that if you know you cannot work on it Package yourself. Work on yourself. I work on myself every day. I returned back from my trip yesterday as tired as I was. I made sure that my daily goals were met. Please, don't you think that it is just the anointing. The anointing is there. I'm going to talk about it. Paul said, I thank my... He says, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, but this grace was not showered upon me in that I labored more than you all. I prepare an average of two to three sermons every week it takes time it takes research it takes staying in the spirit there are other aspects of my life i'm involved in what are you doing there is no laziness don't sit down and say oh god when will you change my my situation don't sit down and say who will come and marry me out of this problem nobody 
at least nobody in Koinonia. And brothers, don't wait and say which lady. The Bible says, he that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Are we together? This is the undoing of Africa. This is the undoing of many people. My neighbors, um, they bought a few months ago, they bought a grinding engine. And the moment they bought that grinding engine and stationed here, at once they became relevant in that environment. Almost all the houses within that environment no longer enter a car and go to Samaru to go and grind beans or whatever. They come to them. What is their reward? The transportation of everybody who should go there now comes to them. A place that was previously very quiet and conservative. Now you see the people leave. Early in the morning, the engine is up. And they are grinding. Sometimes till late in the night. And they are making money from it. Please, I want you to go back and sit down. And be sincere with yourself, young and old. Sit down and say, I now see why things are not working in my life. I now see why I'm feeling the heat of the recession. I am not saying you should be a money monger. Remember, we've done financial dominion. So you cannot sit down and say, now, which business do I do? Uh -uh. That's a wrong question. How do I develop myself to rise to a point of value? When you are valuable, then now you build a system around that value. That's what we call business. Business is simply the art of packaging your value that has been developed to serve a targeted people. Then you receive financial rewards among other things. There's nothing mysterious about business. Building a business is simply having a value, converting it to a product or a service that is needed and useful, and then creating a system that informs your potential customers of what you have to give very simple but it's not as simple as it sounds the last point rise to a point of value rise to a point of value the last point what is the fourth key to becoming transgenerationally relevant the fourth key to rising beyond recession we name the series thrive to thrive does not mean to manage. The thrive, to thrive means to blossom. Thrive gives a picture of a plant growing out. You see how a plant grows out of the soil. And you see it moving regardless of, of the strength of the soil. It shoots through it and it blossoms. That's what it means to thrive. You don't thrive if there are no obstacles. You thrive in spite of obstacles. The fourth key is an encounter with the anointing. Ah, anointing. Anointing. Fall on me. Anointing. Fall on me. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing fall. Sing it one more time, everybody. Anointing fall. the Holy Ghost. Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Ah. I love what I'm about to share with you, I'm telling you, because it's something that has changed my life. You, you, see, you see the amazing dimension of God when you understand the anointing. You are amazing, yeah. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. Oh, 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 You are amazing. No, 
anointing. The anointing. Write this down. Let me give you a few definitions about the anointing. You are amazing, Miguel. You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. Write this down. The anointing is God's seal of authorization to represent Him in your territory. The anointing is God's seal of authorization. It's His authorization upon an individual to represent him. The authorization for legislature, the authorization to represent God and to represent heaven on earth, the anointing. Number two, the anointing is the capacity to produce change and compel compliance. The capacity to produce change and compel compliance. Psalm 66 verse 3. How terrible art thou in thy ways. Through the greatness of thy power. Shall thy enemies submit themselves to you. To compel compliance. Number 3. Now I love this definition. The anointing. It's an empowerment to manifest the possibilities in God. An empowerment to manifest, to reveal, to make known the possibilities that are resident in God. There are possibilities in God. It's a slogan that we use here. Experience possibilities. I think the media should do a montage on this experience possibilities it's a slogan we have come to not just recite but believe we've indoctrinated ourselves with the fact that there there are limitless possibilities in god and those limitless possibilities can find expression to the degree to which the unction the grace of god is at work upon the life of an individual the bible is a compendium an unfolding of the possibilities that are resident in God revealed from generation to generation hallelujah I got a testimony recently and um, I'm sure they may be following online and they, they sent it to me so I can share it in the open when we went to Yola for the last crusade a few months I think a month or two ago we went to Yola one of the person who was driving me around is a doctor PhD you know, with his wife, he's been married and they've, they've been, I mean, no child. This thing has not worked for them. And he decided that he was going to drive me around as a seed. You know, it's been a while they've been married. They're probably following now. And his wife couldn't take him. And, you know, when they were done, we're about to leave. I asked him, I said, what would you want the Lord to do? And then prayed for them. And he sent me a text. I think it was on our way to Bauchi now. On our, no, no, Bauchi. It was on our way to Bauchi. I just got a text. He said, Apostle, the text is still on my phone. He said, I called to tell you that my wife went to the hospital. And they said, I think she's three or a month pregnant. Say results. Shout it. Listen. Results are evidences that God is alive. Not just an evidence that a man is anointed. It's much more than that. It's much more than that. It's much more than that. During our dinner, we'll be playing some videos. I hope that the media would consider that. I don't know what their plans are, but I hope that they should incorporate that. And one of the things that we're going to be doing is playing clips and showing you a few pictures of some of the external ministrations. And some of you will marvel and wonder. Marvel and wonder at the hand of God and what he can do when a man is anointed. I've said it and I will say it again and again. The anointing does not make the difference. The anointing is the difference.
how can the anointing make a difference when it is the difference it is the very difference when all is said and done the grace that comes upon the life of a man I have found David my servant and with my holy oil I have anointed him and the enemy shall not exert upon him and then he reads on and he says and in his in my glory shall his horn be exalted listen let me tell you something I have come to respect the anointing not because of what it has done in my life alone but this ministry you see is a place of possibilities the testimonies the tearful testimonies that have come and it's not just because of Joshua Selman take the anointing out of my life and I'm as empty as this chair you see are we together someone's life is going to be changed because of the anointing someone's life will rise because of the anointing listen after you've worked on your gift your gift needs to be anointed it's one thing to be gifted but it's your gift anointed it says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord but candle without fire on it cannot give illumination are we together there is an anointing that can come upon you and change the dimension of your entrepreneurial exploits and you will see things happen that you never believe there is an anointing that can come on you and your academic career just skyrockets in a way and a dimension there is an anointing that can come upon your music ministry so much more than the vocal competence and your work you lift a voice and sing a song and that song becomes somebody's healing that song becomes someone's i was watching a video today covenant christian center and i was watching their their um, leadership their, their summit that they hold their yearly summit and I was listening to some speakers and while they were talking I said my God these guys are not just business moguls they are they are absolutely anointed absolutely anointed. are we together thou anointed my head with oil you did not anoint my cup you anointed my head but that anointed translated to my cup overflowing there is a relationship between what is on your head and what flows from your cup thou anointest my head with oil my cup runneth over in second kings chapter 4 the wife of the son of the prophet went to elisha and Elisha said, what do I need to do to you? What is, what is wrong? What is the problem? And she said, you know, this and that, there is this situation. And then he says, what do you have in your house? And she said, nothing. Thy handmaid had nothing except a little cruise of oil. And he said, that's it. He said, go and borrow vessels, verse 3. Go and borrow vessels from all your neighbors. He said, borrow not a few borrow not a few if you increase capacity every oil assumes the shape of the container that holds it if i pour this water on the cover listen if i pour this water on the cover the cover will limit the water this makes this water look as though it is triangular pour it in a plate the plate will become like that thank you are we together the anointing and then when she got it he now told her, i said go and close the door when the prophet was talking the anointing is a living thing it was hearing it was hearing the discussion and the moment she did that she began to pour the oil the oil began to multiply listen it's not enough to be anointed you must be anointed at a level that can command notable results it's not enough to be anointed the anointing is like currency the anointing is like currency hundred naira can buy sweet but hundred naira cannot buy shoe but it is still money so don't say i'm anointed the bible says acts chapter 10 right when paul was speaking in the house of cornelius the salvation of the jews 
in verse 38 he said how God anointed look at the extent to which God anointed Jesus so it's not just that Jesus was anointed look at the extent how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and then the Bible says on the strength of that anointing he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil why for God was with him the anointing is not an instrument to shake and fall down and roll no those are just effects of the anointing on the human body and then alongside with other spiritual dynamics that happen at the point of impartation but the proof that a man is anointed is not shaking results results I don't care whether you shake like a leaf results brothers and sisters I just want to praise I lift my hands to say I love you you are everything to me and I exalt your Jesus, are you the Messiah? Is it true that the anointing is on you? And Jesus said, all right, watch this. The blind eyes open, the deaf ears hear, and he said, go back and tell John. How do you know a man who is anointed? Results. Results. Don't trivialize results. It's not all about the results. Are you joking? What then is it about? Results. Lives change. Results. Hallelujah. When there are miracles and signs and wonders and lives transform you speak to someone and just one prophetic word turns his life around you've had all kinds of testimonies here someone with jam result 140 something after prayer you come back 260 something how do you explain that is the anointing a woman barren for eight years returns with triplets no cs how do you explain that results Are we together? Results. A whole family almost ravaged with HIV. That cause and it's not by sleeping around. And just one prayer and everyone is healed. Not just one person. It's called results. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you the truth. You may be criticized, but you will never be ignored. Once the anointing of the spirit is upon the life of a man, upon the life of a business, Satan will raise criticisms. Why? So that your word will not be heard. So that you will not be believed. And so that people will not be blessed. But here's what the Bible says. You can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. The truth was buried only for three days. After three days, it came back to life. Result results notable results not just results he says the spirit of the Lord please give us Isaiah 61 the messianic prophecy it was a prophecy about Jesus Christ the spirit of the Lord is upon me he says for he has anointed me to preach glad tidings to the poor to bind up the broken hearted to set the captives free are we together and then he continues and he says to proclaim liberty to the captives and all of that to proclaim the year of vengeance of our God and all of that to comfort all those who mourn verse 3 and then he says to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them beauty for ashes that's what the anointing does beauty for ashes the oil of joy for the garment of praise right or oh, I'm, I'm the oil of joy for morning 
the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Then he says that they may be called oaks or trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he through them might be glorified. That they may be called oaks of righteousness. Brothers and sisters, when a man comes to a ministry, wretched, terrible, not born again, and something happens to him, it's called the anointing. You get born again, you get filled with the Holy Spirit, your life is transformed, your mindset is changed, you become a leader, you become an ambassador of the kingdom, then you are now anointed again to reproduce sin. The anointing. There is nothing, one of our core values, as you know in this ministry, is the anointing. We believe in the anointing and we believe that anything that is done outside of spiritual empowerment is a waste of time. Absolutely. So you will see the technical department preparing as though they are prayer band. Because everything is done with respect to the anointing. They believe that the sounds are not just instruments of physics. They are spirit and life. Are we together? Listen. Please hear me. I do not boast to have risen so far. Compared to where I need to go, I am just starting. But I can tell you this. I have had the privilege of mentorship to clean upon the shoulders of those who represent the systems of God upon the earth. And this is what they have done. And this is what they do daily. The keys are finite. The keys are not infinite. But every one of them is important for the door to open. The keys to your destiny, they are not infinite. They are not so many. But each and every one of them must be there in place. It's like a code. Your passion for God. A transformed mind. Your gifts and your abilities. And then the anointing of God upon you. No, no, no. You can't be weak. You can't be weak. You can't be weak. It's my prayer that after this teaching, someone will not just hear and say, wow, this was nice. Honestly, when you see me talk like this, I talk from my heart because this is it. You know, sometimes you can be looking for what you don't even know it is. But when someone who has found it says, look, this is what you are looking for. Don't go around and waste your time and come back and say, ah, I didn't know it was like this. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Make sure you talk to him while praying. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your presence. Sing it one more time. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Hey, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Welcome to our lives and destinies. Fill this temple with your presence. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you. Lord. Outside, you can come in. Clear the way for them so they can. I want you to sing the song. It's not a special number. Fill this temple with your power. That's what we need. The anointing upon our lives. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple. We wait 
to mean business with your destiny. Ah. I want you to mean business with your destiny. Don't worry about the rain. There are people who will direct you strategically. Don't be distracted. Father, I declare 
that my mindset must change. Lift your voice and pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. Are you praying? Change my mindset. Change my mindset. Change my paradigm. listen to me. The quality of your life on earth is dependent on your level of mental transformation. Not every information is needed and useful for your destiny. The fact that you are getting information does not mean you are growing. The fact that you are learning new things does not mean you are rising. The information you are getting must be needed and useful. It must be needed and useful. I like you to pray and say, Lord, the grace to edit everything that is not useful for my life and destiny. Lift your voice and pray. The right knowledge, the right information, the right knowledge, the right information. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's raining, but we're still praying. Hallelujah. Apologize to some of those who are at the aisle outside. Sincerely apologize. Hallelujah. As much as possible, if they can find any place, even if it's just outside, let's see how we can help them. But regardless of what condition you're in now, let me tell you, it is profitable what you are doing. Because it will pay you more than money in the name of Jesus. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, what have you put in my life? that should bless my world. Reveal it. Reveal it to me. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, my gift, Lord, the ability that you have put within me in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost. 
There is an ability, 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 there is an ability within my spirit, there is an ability that can change my life, there is an ability that can change my environment. Hallelujah. 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 We are praying. The Bible says there is this treasure. The vessel containing it may be earthen, but the treasure is not earthen. It says there is this treasure in Joshua Selman. There is this treasure in Koinonia that the excellence of power may be of God and not of man. I like you to say every gift you have put in me, Lord, bring it out, bring it out, bring it out. Bring it out. Lift your voice and pray. Every hidden potential. Every hidden potential. I'm rising beyond recession. I'm rising beyond limitation. There is a gift in me. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 60 verse 1 says, Arise, shine, not because you are tired of sitting down. He said, They that sat in darkness, the city of Nephtha and Zebulun, he said, They have seen a great light. Arise, shine, for your light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. The Bible says, for darkness, confusion shall cover the earth and cross darkness the people. He said, but upon you, his glory shall arise. Verse 3 says, Gentiles, hallelujah, Gentiles shall come. You will not look for them. Gentiles will come to your light. Gentiles will come. You will not publicize. There is an unction. There is a gift. There is an ability. Gentiles shall come to your light, then their kings to the brightness of your rising. He said, Your gates shall be continually open, they will not be closed day or night to receive the forces of the Gentiles. Listen, I want you to lift your voice and cry and say, All those who have been ordained to honor my gift, I call them into my life. Lift your voice and pray. Please be serious. Everyone in every territory called, ordained, anointed. Everyone called to honor your gift. Your capacity, your education, your skill, everyone ordained of God, everyone ordained of God, everyone ordained of God to honor what you carry, call them for by the power of the prophetic, by the power of the prophetic.
of Jesus, I command them to appear. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Let me tell you what the Bible says. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. And to him that seeketh, he will find. And to him that knocks, the door will be opened. When you knock on that door, it will open, I assure you. I'd like us to pray. I'd like you to cry for a fresh anointing that will lift you higher. You are not down, but where you are is the limitation of the unction in ministry, in business. There is an oil. There is an unction. Thou anointest my head with oil. Lift your voice and pray for more. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Fresh grace. Upon my life, fresh grace. Upon Koinonia, new levels, new dimensions of kingdom exploit. For the sake of His Majesty. Oh, upon my life, upon my life, I cannot be ordinary. I cannot be ordinary. There is a supernatural anointing, the power of the Holy Ghost, taking me higher, taking me higher. The power of the Holy Ghost, a superior unction upon my life, a superior unction upon my business, a superior unction. Hey. Upon my marriage, a superior unction. An unction that cannot be ignored. 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 Everyone that asketh, receive it. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Everyone that asketh, receive it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. It's raining, but hear me. I am a living testimony that when a man cries unto God, he can hear. The last two or three months have been phenomenal seasons of my life. Stepping into strange operations of graces and unctions. Testimonies beyond imagination. You can pray it through genuine desire. A heart that is thirsty. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, anoint me. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. of Solomon says because of the ointment so do the virgins love thee because of 
the ointment so realms you have never entered will come to you it's not just talking of women because of the ointment upon my head so do the virgins love thee they desire to be with you we are going to pray I want you to pray this prayer with all your heart you are going to challenge every door of limitation see let me tell you honestly if we are to be truthful with ourselves there are people you are not down but you are not up either you can move up when you are up you know you are there i like you to pray and say i challenge limitations you are a spirit and i speak to you in this season you are living lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray I challenge limitation over my life. I challenge limitations. I challenge limitations. Everything fighting my anointing, fighting my influence, fighting the glory of the Lord. Upon Koinonia, I challenge you in the name of Jesus. We come with the rod of a higher priest. Hallelujah. We are going to pray again. It's a year of multiplied grace and influence. Multiplied grace. Influence means a platform. A platform that can afford you an opportunity to shape the minds of people. I like you to pray. We have been indoctrinated that influence is a bad thing. Without influence, the kingdom cannot advance. The key to kingdom advancement is not just evangelism. It's influence. The key and I, if I be lifted up, not if I be talked about, I will draw all men. The capacity to stand at the front line of systems and legislate and be a communicator of the realities of Christ. I like you to pray and say, Lord, every influence destined for me, I decree that the grace for it must come on me. Lift your voice and pray. Oh, desire it. Your heart is pure. Influence. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles. Access to kings. Access to nobles, access to kings, access to men of influence, access to custodians of systems. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One of the blessings and the secret that is responsible for the ease in this ministry is unusual access unusual influence God has given us access to politicians access to governmental figures access to kings access to financial people access to mentors access to voices that can advocate access to the credibility of men access to their willingness to let you leverage upon their success. I want you to pray again and say, Lord, the access I need to end struggle, bring it to my life. Bring it to my life. Lift your voice. It's not as hard as we make it. Influence is powerful. Influence is powerful. Please, I'd like you to pray. Lord, I desire influence, the capacity to rise to a platform where 
where your name can be heard, where your glory can be seen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen, the body of Jesus was hanging on the cross. The body would have remained there indefinitely. It was not a prayer warrior that demanded the body. A man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea. The Bible says he was a noble man. A man of influence. And he used his access. Are we together? To Herod. To Caesar. To demand the body of Jesus. He was a noble man. He had influence. He had a virgin tomb. He had influence. And he said, look, Herod, I need the body of this man. And he said, you have it. There are things you have been praying for that influence will give you at a platter of gold. Are we together? I shared with you the testimony years ago. Listen to me. How that somebody was too short to get to NDA and they said you are disqualified. And then he came back and because he had access to the emir, he complained. And the Emir said they should go back to NDA and tell the people that Emir Yakara, what she said, the Emir has added his height. They should take him. That's the power of influence. Are we together? I have gotten certain things in my life on the sheer platform of influence. You need it. Don't let mediocres deceive you that you don't need it. That's why somebody can come and bully a church with their land and collect it together with all the lawyers there, there is no influence. In the military, you should have influence. Somebody that can stand and become a representative. Imagine if Daniel was not in Babylon. Imagine if Esther was not in the king's palace. Imagine if Joseph was not in Egypt. Let me show you how men. There was a time they wanted to kill Paul. It was not prayer. Paul took advantage of his influence. Will you kill a Roman citizen? Because the issue was too serious. If he said I'm an apostle, he would have died there. He said I'm a Roman citizen. Ah, uh -uh. you don't touch Roman citizens. We have been fished far too long in the body of Christ that the desire for influence is carnality. No. Carnality is the influence of things on your relationship to God. It has nothing to do with wealth. I want to be friends with multi-millionaires. I want to be friends with governmental figures so that we can come and say, can you give us land for church here? And they say, ah, you, please have it. Protocols have been bypassed in my life. Protocols have been bypassed in this ministry because God has granted us grace. We are friends with the Nigerian Union of Road Transport Workers. We are friends with the police, the military. You name it from any angle, there is somebody to speak. When a student is victimized on campus, there are intellectuals among us. There are people who we can speak to. Oh, daddy, sir, mommy, sir, please, can you help this person? Let me tell you, it's a tragic thing when you are in the place of help and there is no voice to speak. Sometimes you are in the prison, you don't have access to the palace. You need somebody who is already in the palace to say, no, I endorse this person. This person is a man of integrity. It's not all about what you can do by yourself. Are we together? Nigeria that is full of bureaucracy and sentiment. You need men and women strategically positioned to help you. Matthew Ashimolowo was the first Christian to be allowed in Ghana. Ghana TV mainstream to preach. They refused him. The indigenous pastors did everything to him. They refused him. But when he came, because he was connected to somebody who was connected to the government and they knew that their daily bread was dependent on him, they allowed him. Who has God raised in your life to speak for you? Brothers and sisters, you cannot rise alone. Let me tell you, it's a mystery I'm sharing with you. You need men of influence. It's a class of destiny helpers. Are we together? That somebody can speak. Yes, I know the rent is due. And they are about to throw you out. 
But somebody is a friend to your landlord. He can say, please, landlord, I know that you are supposed to drive this, but this person is my son. And he say, on grounds of relationship. Do you know, let me tell you, when, how you know there is no helper in your life is when you get into trouble. You fight alone. You pray alone. When Daniel was in the den, Darius could not sleep. He rose up the next day. He said, oh, Daniel, has your God delivered you? When he said to say, bring him out, go and carry all those people. Throw them in. Who can punish your enemies? Who has what it takes to bring to book they that speak against the purposes of God? Every one of our board of trustees by the grace of God in this ministry is a man or a woman of influence. Are we together? If there are people today, the government cannot come and pull them. There are churches. One of my pastor friends was speaking to me. He heads the branch of one ministry in a particular northern city. And he said how that they had refused. They showed him the letter signed by the governor that they cannot give land. It's impossible. No matter what you do, they cannot give church land. All the other churches that had it, had it since. But in recent times, no, they will not give it. And a particular denomination in this country they decided to do an expansion program and they have six of their churches there. All of them own their land. They influence. Shout it again. Somebody called somebody who said, look, be careful. This seat you are in is for four years. You don't play with no matter how stupid, no matter how a madman is, he does not enter fire by mistake. You need influence. There are many believers, there are many families that are bullied and there's no one they can wise as serpents. You live in an economy, a system that is hostile to anything God. You need influence. Unfortunately, all the people in our lives are like us. We are the most influential persons among them. When God taught me this, I started making friends with billionaires. I'm not looking for their money. Access and influence. Are we together? The property that you want to get, the person said they were they were giving it to somebody. There are some business persons who came and wanted to get it. But because of influence, say, no, 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 David, we want to book believers and we want to book this ministry. Brothers and sisters, if you don't pray this prayer, you will struggle alone. You don't have to pay for everything by yourself. Let influence pay for some things for you. Once you are seated in one minute, I'd like you to just begin to pray and obtain grace from God. You are seated inside, you are seated outside. Obtain grace. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Father, I obtain grace. I obtain grace to fan my prayer altar back in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. Someone is praying. Shibrande kaskadela hasibash. Magata prande gedebele kosiata. I obtain grace. I can pray negative things out of my life. I can pray the will of God into my life and destiny. You want to strive for mastery? You must understand prayer. Hallelujah. Listen. The Bible recommends, listen carefully. The Bible recommends an approach to prayer. The most effective dimension of prayer, second only to praying in the spirit, is praying the promises of God. Write it down, please. Praying the promises of God. Isaiah 41 and verse 21. The word of God, as you know, defines the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. That means God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions and the allowance of scripture. Let me repeat myself. God cannot be committed to the believer outside of the provisions and the allowance of scripture. The word of God defines the boundary of God's commitment to the believer. It says, produce your cause saith the Lord. 
bring forth your strong reasons, saith the king of Jacob. Do you know what this means? Approach prayer like a legal system in the realm of the spirit. Don't just say, God bless me. Based on what? Don't just say, God change my life. You are God. That's the kind of prayer we pray. Lord, I'm tired of this situation. Arise, oh God. Based on what? He says, produce your cause. Bring forth your strong reasons. That means bring my word to me in prayer. The scriptural basis that commits me to move on that wise. Are we together? So the devil is plaguing your family, plaguing your life. And you say, God, I'm tired of this situation in Jesus' name. I assure you, you reported your situation, but you didn't pray. What is the basis? Lord, bless me. Uh -uh. What is the basis? Even Jesus himself, I've taught you this. When Satan came to Jesus, he said it is written. It is written is what gives strength to your prayer. It is not what you are saying that gives strength to your prayer. It is saying what is written. When you say what you want, it is not prayer. When you say what is wrong, it is not prayer. It's when you connect what you want and what is wrong to what God has said. Now that is prayer. Father, your word declares that though my beginning be small, my later end will greatly increase. Based on this truth, in the name of Jesus, I place a demand upon the grace that makes for advancement and increase. Now you are praying. As simple as it sounds, I can tell you many believers will keep shadow boxing and believing they are praying. The promises of God. I've taught you here that the word of God contains three things essentially. Every time you open scripture, the word of God is a capture of promises, principles, and prophecies. Every time you open your Bible, you are interacting with number one, the promises of God. Number two, the principles of the kingdom. Number three, prophecy. Can I tell you this? If you are a leader here of a prayer group, you are a leader here of any prayer platform, don't just tell people, pray, pray, pray. Bring the scriptures that support what you are asking. If not, I can guarantee you, you wasted your time. Hezekiah turned his face to the wall. He would have said, God, this is not fair. He said, remember, I have worked diligently. In other words, remember what your word says about those who serve your house. Can I tell you this? If you know how to bring forth your strong reason, you can go to bed. You will commit God and, and destroy, dislodge anything that is not of God in prayer. I speak like I speak life, you're gonna leave, oh my brother, my sister. I speak life, you are the head and not the tail, you will prevail. I speak life, don't give up the fight for your life. You shall live and not die. Listen to me. This thing you see is a very powerful song. But when you get to the place of prayer, you must find what God has said. Otherwise, you have not prayed. Father, I bring before you your word. Your word declares that life and death has been set before me. Blessing and cursing that I have the power to choose life. Now in honor to your word, I choose life. You are making decrees. It's being registered in the realm of the spirit. When you are saying it, demons are hearing you. And there is a basis for your confidence. What is written? Father, your word declares that a thousand shall fall by my side. And ten thousand by my right side. That none shall harm me. 
It is not just what is written that blesses you. It's what is written that you have found. And you engage with understanding, even in the place of prayer. I found your word and I did it. It was a joy and a rejoicing unto me. Is someone learning? So your first assignment when you want to engage in prayer, especially in understanding, is to make sure you have the patience to bring the scriptures that, begin, that, that become the basis of your defense and of making your petition. Don't just go and pray and ramble around. Internet has made it easy to pray efficiently. If you want to pray concerning your health, say for instance, you can go and just Google prayers concerning health. Different scriptures will come. It's your responsibility to filter it by the Spirit to the two or three. If you can find just two or three, that may be sufficient. Go to the place of prayer. Lord, I bring before you this. And you are praying. Kailashko prandagata. And while you are praying, you find out that things just begin to shift and change. Believers, please hear me. If we don't teach believers the power of prayer and gaining mastery even in the place of prayer many people will stop praying they will be tired and say this thing does not work the prayer that works is the prayer that is connected to scripture the prayer that work is the prayer that is derived of the spirit outside of the ministry of the word and the spirit prayer does not work let me repeat outside of the ministry of the word and the spirit prayer does not work it just becomes a motion of dissipating energy prayer is based on what God has said prayer is based on what you want that is connected to what God has said your first assignment is to find out what he has said that relates to what you want now you can go to the place of prayer with understanding the bible says this is the confidence we have that when we ask anything according to his will he heareth us so it tells you there is a possibility that you will not be heard if it's not according to his will hallelujah number two what is the second principle that we need to engage if we want to strive for mastery please write this down understanding and engaging the laws and the principles of the kingdom the first is understanding prayer the second is understanding and engaging the laws and the principles of the kingdom I can spend weeks after weeks teaching this understanding and engaging the laws and the principles of the kingdom that means your mastery in this kingdom is based on the degree to which you understand and engage the laws and the principles of the kingdom. Remember our initial scripture that he that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19, please. Someone is rising to a point of mastery in the name of Jesus. Matthew 16 19 and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven say the keys of the kingdom please shout it one more time say the keys of the kingdom and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatsoever thou shalt lose on earth shall be loose in heaven now King James did not do justice to what this really means the expression is that you have a a way of seeing what has been bound in heaven then you now bind it on earth give us amplified amplified will give us a clearer picture of what the Bible says now listen I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven and whatsoever you bind declare to be improper and unlawful that's what binding is on earth must be what is already bound in heaven are you seeing now and what is already bound whatsoever you lose declare lawful on earth must be what is already loose in heaven he is saying that you have the power by access to the keys of the kingdom through knowledge you can know what has been declared from the realm of the spirit to happen in your life and with these keys you bind and lose with this key you declare lawful and you declare unlawful as far as your life is concerned 
the keys of the kingdom. You gain mastery by holding the keys of the kingdom. In Luke chapter 11 and verse 52, Jesus calls it the key of knowledge. Luke 11 and 52. He said, woe unto you lawyers, for ye have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering you hindered. What wickedness. You didn't enter into that realm of mastery through knowledge. And those who now want to enter, you are stopping them. Jesus said, woe to you. He cursed those who were trying to stop people from gaining exact spiritual understanding. Listen carefully. Every time any dimension of the kingdom does not seem to open up to you. It means there is something wanting as far as your spiritual knowledge in that area is concerned. Every time any dimension of the kingdom does not seem to open up to you, it means that there is no knowledge in that area or there is insufficient knowledge in that area. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. And Moses said, this is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do, and the glory of the Lord shall appear unto you. There is what you must know that activates what you do, and the Bible says the glory of the Lord will appear unto you. Believers, listen to me. Your prayer this night should be Psalm 25 from verse 4 and 5. Psalm 25 from verse 4 and 5. It says, show me thy ways, O Lord. Teach me thy paths. Verse 5. Lead me in thy truth and teach me. For thou art the God of my salvation. On thee do I wait all day. He said, teach me. Open my eyes, O God, to see. Take away this age-long ignorance in my life. I want to gain mastery to knowledge. I'm tired of being afraid, going out in the morning and wondering if I'll come back. I must fortify myself with knowledge. I'm tired of being afraid because of what is happening around the economy. I can rise through mastery and gain knowledge of the laws of the kingdom. Most of us know that Moses saw the glory of God. But I will tell you the first thing Moses asked for was not the glory of God. Exodus chapter 33. There were two requests that Moses made. The first was in verse 13 and the second was in verse 18. Please let's look at it quickly. Now therefore, Exodus 33, 13. I pray thee, if I have found grace in your sight, he says, show me now thy way. Show me your way was his first request. Then you go to verse 18. And he now prays a second request. And he said, I beseech thee, show me your glory. There is a relationship between his ways and his glory. Show me your way. Show me your glory. So the Bible says he made his, made his ways known to Moses. But to Israel, they only saw his acts, the results, without gaining mastery on how to reproduce them. Hallelujah. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. When I found this truth, I made up my mind that I was going to learn the laws of the kingdom, no matter how many. I will search for them one by one by one by one by one until I gain mastery. I will study and restudy and restudy until my life becomes a capture of these principles. Most of you have not mastered the laws of the kingdom. I submit to you. And I submit to you that it's not as easy as it sounds. It takes a lot of dedication and intention to say, I'm not going to live my life shadow boxing. I will learn these principles. Every facet of your life has the ways of God that control it. Finances, your health, longevity, ministry, influence. There are laws of the kingdom. Please pay attention. You see, we live in very troubling times right now. 
and so many people are already troubled and perplexed wondering what will become of my life your immunity in the days that we live is the fortification that the knowledge of these laws provide for you these laws can surround and secure you like chariots you can know of a truth that you will stand the test of time because these laws are backed up by God's own integrity Hear what I'm telling you. The spirit of death will look for everybody, including you. I don't mean to scare you, but it is the truth. If you do not know the ways of God to keep yourself alive, you will be surprised thinking you will not die till you die. The spirit of poverty will look for everybody, including you. Even Jesus said, Satan cometh to me, but he, does, he did not find anything. But he came. Are we together? In this kingdom, our defense is based on the power of the laws of the kingdom that we understand and we engage. For tonight, I will take two of these spiritual laws. Listen carefully and then we'll pray. We'll continue next week. I hope someone is learning. God of heaven. These laws are so powerful and irrefutable that if you hang on to these laws and you learn these principles, Ladies and gentlemen, your life will be a surprise even to you. Are we together? The first law is the law, I call it the sacrifice of total surrender. Just write it down. The sacrifice of total surrender. 1 Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. The sacrifice of total surrender. Second Corinthians 5, 14 and 15. Please give it to us. The sacrifice of total surrender. It says, for the love of Christ constraineth us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. Verse 15. Please look up. It says, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. The sacrifice of total surrender. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 25. This is one of the most fundamental principles for the making of champions in the kingdom. This law is a sacrifice. It will take everything from you but it will give you everything. You want to gain mastery in the kingdom? Learn the ways of God. For whosoever will save his life, what will happen to him? You will lose it. And whosoever will lose his life for my sake, that person will find it. Let me tell you this. You are not ready to do business with God until you die to yourself there are two things you have to conquer sin and self if you conquer sin you are still not free it has to be sin and self what an unbeliever needs to conquer is sin what a believer needs to conquer is self both must die for you to rise Except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it abides alone. I want to show you a very powerful but neglected spiritual law. For as long as God is still something you use, 
to make a good life. For as long as God is still a deity that you use to be a champion, you use him to get prosperity, you use him to get this, forget about certain levels of mastery, not with power, not with wisdom. If it is the God of the Bible that you want to see him stronger, mighty in your life, it must be the law of complete, perfect, unassuming surrender. Another word for it is death. I know you don't like what I'm teaching you, but please hear me. If you are striving for mastery, you have to obtain grace from God. Die to your desires. Die to your feelings. Die to whatever it is. Anything that is not the Christ. I have been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. There are many people who want to gain mastery over the anointing. They just see wonderful things happen. They want anointings. They, no, you have to be dead. God does not trust you when you are alive to yourself. Your tendencies, the variables are too many. When you are dead, he can give you money. Because if you, give it, if you keep one million on a dead man's body, you will come and meet it there. But if somebody is alive, even if he's sick, and you keep one million there, you will come and find 750,000. He didn't go out, yet the money left. The tendencies of men. Are we together? <laughs> Let me tell you this. There are many believers that take God for granted. They think God just plays abracadabra. They pray all kinds of prayers. They want high level power. They want this level of grace. They want influence. And the price of death is a price they are unwilling to pay. I tell you sincerely, behind every strange dimension of mastery and grace is blood dripping on that altar. The price for life, I have taught you, is death. The size of God is so heavy, if you carry him alive in yourself, it will kill you. Listen to me. Many of you here desire higher levels of grace. You want to see God use you so mightily. You know what it means to die to yourself? It means there is nothing and no one that will ever have the ability to replace God in your life. To die does not mean to throw away your plans. It means to demote them to a point that God stands at the epicenter of your life. Lovest thou me more than this? Many believers do not know. Let me tell you, if you like fast for one year, if you like pray every day for the rest of your life, if you like do whatever you do, if you do not cross the gate of death, forget about mastery and power with God. When God comes to meet you, he would demote everything that is him. Let me tell you how God demotes it. He does not demote it by asking it to go down. He will allow it to fail you one by one till you are left with nothing. And you will come and say, God, I thought it's a job. I thought it's this one. How many of you can give up everything for Jesus as you are sitting? I know you will easily lift your hand and say, me. And I tell you, don't be careless in lifting your hands because he will come to you. It's a very difficult law that you need the grace of God to keep. Because remember, you've spent your life building your reputation. You've spent your life fine-tuning your ambition. And here comes the king of glory, pushing everything and wanting to take that place. It's as if you don't have a life again. Lord, you want to just come and damage my life and myself what? And he tells you, I don't kill. I only kill to resurrect. I give you another body, a life of beauty and glory. Help those under the anointing. You want to see the power of God? You want to see the grace of God? Forget all these things. I'm I know what I'm saying. You package seed offering. Come and drop it. He will not impart that realm on you. Our, our, our generation just believes that money does everything. Just squeeze an envelope and drop it. And you want to drop a realm of power that only death, death can take you. No, sir. There is a place for those things, but that is not it. Total 
surrender. Total surrender. That is the price. Your prayer now finds value. Your word study now finds value when that surrender is in place. It's a sacrifice. I beseech thee, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you offer your bodies unto God, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. He calls it your reasonable act of worship. Do you know what it means to be surrendered? You lose the ability to tell God no. To be totally surrendered means you have killed the option of no forever. Whatever you want, my answer is yes. Whatever you say, no more argument with you. You are final authority in all things. Abraham, take now thy son, thy only son. And Abraham carried the son to go. Even Jesus himself, that was the law that he engaged he came to the earth in obedience to the father even when he didn't the bible did not hide the fact that jesus himself didn't want to die go and read your bible in gethsemane the bible tells us his prayer content father if it be thy will jesus shift this cup away from me but he said nevertheless not my will that is the language of men who have died lord truly this is what i've desired but nevertheless not my will not my will man of god not my will businessman not my will all this our intelligence where we push god out of our lives and say get out of the way god you don't know i am a nigerian we keep crash landing because we don't allow the wisdom of god to take precedence nevertheless not my will I will keep telling you this. I love you so much with all my heart, but if the God of heaven will ask me to close Koinonia now, I stand before the God of heaven to tell you that this will probably be the last service. That's it. Don't say you love him more. He will test it. More than what? More than what? Is someone learning now? You want to strive for mastery? You have to get to a point where your mind is spiritually minded. Spiritually minded. Lord, if it is for you, there is nothing I would not do. For your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my king. For your glory, Lord, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my King. I want to be where you are, got to be where you are. Listen, can I tell you? There is nobody sitting here or standing here, including the man speaking to you, who has the power to give your all. No, you only have the power to give God access to, and to be enthroned above it. Nobody has the power to give everything. You can only give God access to take everything. Believe me, there are things that are too precious in your life. They cannot go. You just have to give him access and say lord i don't even know what i'm doing but you must be my god ah. hmm. gotta be where you are gotta be where you are i wanna be where you are you see let me tell you believers hear me when you get to this realm where nothing else matters to you anything that comes close to god has already failed because god is in a position jealously guarded god says you've done this for me i know the things you should want and look for 
And since you have prioritized me, you will begin to see things you did not even pray for. Look, let me tell you, fearful is the man who pushes past that realm of pain and gets to that point where in reality and in experience, you have enthroned Jesus above any and everything. There is nothing God will not give you. Believe me when I tell you this. I've shared with you my experience where God told me, son, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. Please help them. If you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. There is nothing, there is no one who compares with you. I take pleasure when I worship you. I take pleasure in worshiping. I take pleasure in worshiping you, Lord. Hear me. There are many of you looking at me right now. You are only in church because of the need that brought you. You are only in church because of something driving you. One altar from your village pursued you and you ran to the house of God. That is important. You are welcome. But can I tell you, you must get to a point with God where you say, Lord, I'm no longer playing games. I mean it seriously. Whether you bless me or not, you are still my God. Whether you prosper me or not, you are still my God. Whether my requests are answered or not, you are still my God. I'm not playing this church business with you of exchange where I say, give me breakthrough for my loyalty. You are not a politician. Everything, let it be yours. Can I tell you this? It is a very painful decision. But if you make that decision where everything belongs to him, your life, your reputation, your strength, your energy, now you have entered the realm of power. Now you have entered the realm of favor. Now you have entered the, le the realm of uncommon grace. Now you have entered the, le the realm of wisdom where you become a friend of God. It takes death to be a friend of God. All these songs, people just claim I'm a friend of God. Do you know what it means to be a friend of God? Can I hide this from my friend Abraham? The realm of friendship is the realm of revelation. He comes to you. Believers, hear me. We need to teach the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. That God is not all about miracles. That God is not all about breakthroughs and signs and wonders. I'm not saying they are wrong. But let me tell you, if all we keep chasing after, prostituting around, just miracle, breakthrough, power, result, money. No. You have to move past those realms and get to a point where you say, Lord, you are my everything. There's no plan B. There is no plan B. We die here. There is no plan B. I'm not just trying to use you so that if something works, no. For as long as you have options to God, forget about gaining mastery. Forget about seeing his power and his glory. Man of God, if you still have plan B as to who empowers you, God will never come to you. The sacrifice of total surrender. So then death walks in us. That life will walk in you. Don't you think you just stretch your hands at sick people and say be healed. And then they are healed. God is not a magician. Don't think you just sit down and say where is my destiny helper. Come and bless me. No. After this series, we are getting into the series where I am going to be teaching you on covenants. And you will learn, I will show you something very powerful that will change your life. When you go and meet occultists and these people who walk, they don't hear anything like word of mouth. I'm going to be loyal, I'll be serious and nonsense. You are just talking nonsense. Bring a piece of paper, they say nonsense. A paper that you can tear is your own blood you bring. I hope you know. For Satan to take you serious, you must bring your blood. And then they cut, they, they will open. So you've, you've seen these things in Nigerian films and the rest. 
and then they make some incisions and now satan can be sure that you are serious with him what makes you think you just fold your arms and casually emotionally come to god and say god just give me one billion plus anointing for nations i promise i will serve you and you think god is so stupid you say i love you i died for you take it no there is a realm of death where he's the one who brings you alive. You no longer live for yourself. Otherwise, you can pray and pray and pray. And God cannot trust you. It will be a risk to give you that kind of power. It will be a risk to give you that kind of pedigree. It will be a risk to give you that kind of wealth. Why am I teaching you this? I truly believe with all my heart that we're entering seasons where... Matthew 25 is about to be replayed in the church. You know what Matthew 25 is? The parable of the talents. God is coming like a mighty wind upon believers and he's beginning to trust them with things for nations. I tell you this, you will start seeing God give gifts to men in spectacular ways. You will start seeing God trust men with graces for territories and nations. The question is, can your death afford you that gift? He gave unto one five talents. He gave unto one two talents. There are prophets that will rise like never before. There are apostles that will rise like never before. There are businessmen that will rise like never before. There are politicians that will rise like never before. You will see levels of power that will dumbfound principalities and powers. But let me tell you, the price is not just fasting. The price is not just prayer. The price is not just Bible study. The price is death. All of you must be on that altar for that fire to come. I lay it all down again. To hear you say that I'm your friend Help me find a way Bring me back to you Hey Oh, you're all I want Shema la sata prandege de bala suprapata Hallelujah. By this teaching tonight, God is already answering someone. Why is it that some things look hard? God has seen that there is a measure of death you are unwilling to get into. That is why certain levels of power and knowledge and wisdom may not easily come to you. God has vetted you. That was his, listen, the hand that wrote in the days of the king, king I think that was Belshazzar also, also. The hand wrote, and hear what Daniel interpreted the writing to be. Mene, mene tekel He said, you have been weighed. So God weighs men. You have been weighed in a balance. And you have been found wanting. I weighed your motif. I weighed your desire for wanting that business to work. I weighed your motif for wanting the anointing. I weighed your motif for wanting a great vision. I found it wanting. Let me tell you sincerely. There are some things in our lives, it's not the devil causing it. It is that the level of death we need to submit to, to allow that magnitude of blessing, we have not yet attained it. Businessman, it does not take God anything to arrange systems that bring you millions and billions. I assure you, this God of heaven has shown once and again that the cattle on a thousand hills belong to him. But there is a level of death. You know what it means to sit down with hundreds of billions in your account, in cash and assets, and still roll on the ground before God? 
Go and ask Solomon what happened to him. Go and ask King Solomon. Solomon who saw the manifested presence of God twice. Everything he wanted he had. But he got to a point in his life where the Egyptian women turned him. And he forgot the God of heaven. He wrote the book of Ecclesiastes as a backslidden man. Death. Hmm. You are striving for mastery. The Bible says, he that strives for mastery is not crowned, except he strives lawfully. We need to pray and ask God to purge our hearts, vet our tendencies, and remove anything that will stop that weight of glory from resting upon us. That is the prayer of the believer in this season. To sit down and say, Lord, you see I'm qualified for this is nonsense. You must cry and tremble before God and say, Lord, I don't even know my tendencies myself. Can I tell you the truth? I don't mean to insult you and I don't want you to feel bad. There are many of you who have been in this city for many years and many decades. You are well-meaning Christians and yet you don't seem to have passed beyond certain doors. I will tell you what is wrong. You have seemed to do everything right. There is something God has seen in your heart that if certain weights of glory rest upon you and that thing has not died, it will end up being a disadvantage. It's like giving a little baby an AK-47 and showing the baby how to shoot. The baby can turn it to himself and shoot and kill itself. Create in me a clean heart, he said. Renew a right spirit. You can have a wrong spirit, not just a demon spirit, a wrong spirit, a wrong motivation. Renew a right spirit within me. This is only the first law. So that when you see the unusual exploits that God is doing through men and women across the globe, please do not think it's just luck and do not think it's just impartation. There is an altar with blood dripping on it. An altar with blood dripping on it. An altar with blood dripping on it. A token of death. My question to you is, are you willing to just keep playing Christianity, playing nominal Christianity, or you are really ready to dive into this, this river of seriousness and mastery with God? To say, Lord, I know that the thoughts you think towards me are not thoughts of evil, but of good. To bring me a future and an expected end. I'm ready to burn the bridges behind me. As for you, I am, I am with you forever and for the rest of my life. As for me, there is no plan B. There is nowhere else to go. The bridge is born, long burned. We live here, we die here. There is no plan B. You have plan B and C and D and E and E and F. That's why when you say, God, I give you everything, all the other plans say, what of us? We are here too. You must burn everything and say, Lord, it's all about you. Remember that our song? Jesus, no, this is for you. It's for your glory and your fame. It's not about me. As if you should do things my way. You alone are God, and I surrender. Listen. Tonight is not just a teaching. If I just stop on this law alone, it is sufficient for the night. Because we are going to take out time and pray. And in that prayer, you see, I'm going to leave you and God alone. I'll be doing my own here with my own God. And you are going to have to pray and say, Lord, you are the one who knows the truth of who I am. You are the one who knows the tendencies in my heart. You are the one who knows what is blocking what I see in my visions from happening in my life. 
there are there are realms i should have entered now there are dimensions i would have attained there are some of you everything you have seen in your visions not one of it has come to pass because you are too alive in yourself it's a risk for god to allow prophecy to manifest in your life I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the reins or the motif to give to every man. Jeremiah 17, please give it to us, 9 and 10. 9 and 10. We are going to cry a cry in this place. It's going to be a cry of repentance, a cry of handover, a cry of rededication. The meeting is still on. Tonight will not be fruitful if all we do is just talk about surrender. It's something that must be practical in our hearts. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10. It says, I, the Lord, I search the heart. I try the reins or the motive, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Businessman, I tell you, you have not handled the wealth of the kingdom yet until you die. God can take a man's prayer point and bring to you. You see, let me tell you this. This is the reason why often God will pick people who are nobodies and honor them. You know why? Because of their lowly estate. It is easy. They are malleable. They are not full of themselves. They, don't, they know they don't amount to much in themselves. So it's easy for them to give everything. And God says, I know you can't speak English very well, but your yieldedness is what I'm looking for. So I can make do with your limitation in English. I will still make you an apostle. I will still make you a prophet. I know that um, the way you are, there are disadvantages to your life. But what I'm looking for is the death and the yieldedness. Many of us bring our qualifications and everything to God and he says this is not what I'm looking for I know what I'm searching for a vessel that is yielded a vessel that is dead a vessel that is yielded a vessel that is dead and he can pour that oil upon you and he can pour that grace upon you look let me tell you it's a spectacular sight to behold when you see a vessel that has been brought like a reed out of fire If you came to church tonight to encounter the God of the Bible, if you came to church tonight because you are serious with God, if you came to church tonight because you truly mean it with Jesus, if you came to church tonight because you know that the spirituality of your life is what controls everything around your life, then it was a good reason to come to church tonight. But if you came to church just to sign the register, that I'm in church today or you came to church to just escort someone for the fun of it I love you with all my heart but I may tell you it was not a wise reason to be in church I submit to you I will say this and we'll begin to pray people see the things that God is doing in and through my life and most times most people think this thing is just luck or this thing is just about anointing i think it's just an impartation that came it's not it's not true believe me when i tell you it's not all about anointing it's not all about just impartation go behind the scenes and you will find a pool of blood that still drips upon the altar still drips upon the altar still drips upon the altar it is from that that covenant of sacrifice because sacrifice is a covenant psalm 50 and verse 5 gather unto me my saints they that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice hallelujah i've had the privilege of ministering to many people who were involved in occultism or any of these satanic things and i cannot begin to tell you the sacrifices that they make to move them from level to level some of them will tell you they lie down and sleep on graves not in a vision physical graves imagine being in a graveyard only you in the night you are looking for power power for performance or invincibility now you are lying down you want to become an armed robber who can disappear in case they are looking for you 
and they will give you a strict requirement. Number one, you are fasting day and night. There's not like, it's not like you are breaking in the night. Then you are lying down on a grave. It doesn't matter what sound you hear, you remain there. And when they are done with those stringent things, after seven days, they come out. And you just come out carelessly and say, I know you can't stand against me. Let's think well, oh. Let me tell you the truth. Whether it is through the demonic or through spirituality, genuine spirituality, sacrifice is a non-negotiable requirement. You don't stand up. You don't read your Bible. You are not serious. You see someone who day and night, he has interacted with spirits physically. And he comes to stand and say, I will kill you. And he say, God forbid, I won't die. You will be surprised. Our work in this kingdom is based on the covenant. Your covenant is a voice. It can stand to amplify what you represent. There are spirits when you speak to, they know what they see. Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Ask them what they are seeing that makes them count those names. The sons of Sceva had zeal. They went to cast out demons just like that. There are many believers who have not satisfied this law. And they will go and carry charms and throw it away. And say, God forbid, Jesus has died. He has won the victory. And you find out that people start dying endlessly. Because they taught something that did not come by sacrifice. Redemption is real. But the administration of mastery in this kingdom subscribes to the law of sacrifice. Not even Jesus evaded it. When Jesus hung on that cross, you thought the father would see him crying and say, it's enough. The father left him there till he died. And that is the father who is love. And the cry of Jesus, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. You thought the father would say, no, 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 my heart of love. If Jesus still died there. Can I tell you the truth? Just because God is love does not mean you will compromise on the law of sacrifice. I respect the body of Christ. I don't criticize men of God. It's not, it's not in my, my office or my call. But I can tell you, be careful what you hear. This is why there is a lot of powerlessness in the body of Christ. We just get up with arbitrary things that cannot stand the test of time in the midst of the darkness and the evil that is in our world. Can I tell you, the very altars that fight many families was initiated by sacrifice. And when we talk of sacrifice, we are not talking money. Because most of the church has reduced sacrifice to money. So the moment you say sacrifice, people just think offering. And they think if I give one million, that's sacrifice. The sacrifice is you, not just the money. No amount of money will replace you. That you go back and you say lord it is not a difficult thing for you to change my story and grant me mastery it is not a difficult thing for you to lift me something must be the limitation and i share with you just one law for tonight death death the sacrifice of total complete surrender can you empty your account if he asks you to <laughs> hmm. Can you pack all of your clothes? Can you give up your cars? Can you give up your houses if he asks you to? I'm not saying you should do it. You see now, all that emotional prayer now has been wiped away by what I'm saying because these are real things you are, these are the strings that stop you from moving forward. Pilots will tell you that the lighter a plane is, the easier and faster it can fly. Is that true? The heavier a plane is. In fact, there are times that based on the size of the plane, they can reduce the luggage down so that it does not affect it at flight. Seeing then that we are surrounded by this so great a cloud of witnesses, it says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Hear this. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Is it in your Bible? Who endured the cross and despised the shame? There is endurance when it has to do with being a master and a giant 
You watch these Olympians and you see what they do. Watch these boxers, the world champion in everything. Sometimes you see them in the morning in a country that has ice and snow and you see them walking out. They are sweating, but they are walking out with awards in their house, yet they are walking out. And you are asking, what else are you looking for? That is what it takes to remain there. Can I tell you, whatever brings you to the place of grace is what will make you will even need greater weights of it. You see all these boxers boxing all these things around and you are saying, these guys, don't you go and relax and do this. I like to watch champions in action. It inspires me. When you watch a master communicator, maybe speaking in an occasion or so, and you see how these people, they, they use English and I mean dominion over words. They can capture your attention with uncanny mastery. Go and check what they do that led to that result. You will go to their homes and see videos and dictionaries. They go back to school again and learn English in their homes, ABCs, and train themselves with discipline while others are sleeping. Go and ask the chef what makes him so exceptional that one meal, one meal can be as much as a thousand dollars. One plate. What is in the plate? Find out. Respectfully speaking, even our dear politicians, whether you win or lose, you are going to go through the labor of going around publicizing and doing all of these things. That is some serious effort there. Go and ask some of the wealthiest CEOs around the world. You will see them in office over time. Even when those they have employed have gone home, some of them will be there. They may sleep in the office. Sacrifice. It is only when it comes to the body of Christ that we just believe that because Jesus has done everything, we just throw it away and just assume that it's at work in my life. But you see that the results don't show, dear people of God. It's why the church remains powerless. It's why the church remains... And for many people, all we know about sacrifice is praying and fasting and study of the Bible. So the moment I'm praying, the moment I'm fasting, the moment I'm studying scripture, I just believe that I'm going through the sacrifice for greatness. Not so. Believe me. There is something beyond prayer, fasting, Bible study. It is you being the living sacrifice. Upon that altar, Lord, I have lost the ability to tell you no. What you desire is my desire. If you tell me go left, left I go. If you tell me go right, right I go. Whatever you tell me, that is it for me. If you tell me leave ministry, that is it. If you say go back to ministry, that is it. Have you gotten to that point? Believe me, if you get to that point, you will see something about God. God will brand his hand upon your life in a way that will cause your world to marvel. This teaching tonight is leaving you with two options. One, to continue doing Christianity the way you are used to doing it. Or to say, I take God seriously from this teaching tonight. I may not know all it takes, but this one law that I've found, I have heard for some of you for the first time, others a reiteration. I'm going to subscribe. Let nothing and no one be so great in my life that it takes the place of God. If that becomes your prayer and you mean it with all your heart, you will count testimonies like the sons of the seashore because your life, you, things you prayed for and the ones you did not pray for, you become a friend of God. Let's pray. Don't forget what I have told you. That in this season, I discern very strongly that the giver of all good things is coming to his body again. And there will be strange distribution of new things. God is going to come to believers. There are people who will be enthroned at higher levels. A thousand cubits is about to be measured over many believers. And some will shift into deeper levels of power. Some will shift into deeper levels of influence. Some will shift into deeper levels of wealth. Make sure you subscribe for what God is doing through sacrifice. So that you don't become part of those pointing fingers at people and saying, don't mind them. It's, they are just lucky. No, 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 no. You must make up your mind.
Is someone ready to pray? I give you two, three minutes alone with God before we do a general prayer. Please, no distraction. Let's respect what God is doing. I want you to cry before the God of your salvation. Lord, purge my heart. Purge my heart. Bring me to a point of total surrender. May nothing be too much to give you. May nothing be too much to hand over to you. You gave me everything. The grace to give you everything. All our viewers, make sure you are praying, crying to the God of heaven, who are striving for mastery. And in addition to understanding the ministry of prayer and its capacity to build a believer, we must understand death. Death to your ego, death to your reputation, especially. Make sure you pray. Lord, this is my ego, this is my reputation. Take it out of the way. I desire to serve you acceptably. My passion for titles, my passion for name, my passion for this and that. Take it out of my life. I want to see you exalted. That is all I desire. Jesus exalted. Jesus enthroned. Enthroned him beyond your business. Enthroned him beyond Koinonia. Enthroned him beyond Joshua Selman. Lord, we exalt you. We enthrone you. Purge our hearts. Purge our hearts. Purge our hearts. Purge our hearts. Grant us the grace. Let nothing, let no one, let no lifting be able to take your place in our lives. That which you want is what we also want. Go ahead and pray. Speak to him. You're contending for power with God. Lord, I love the ministry, but I exalt you above it. I love the business, but I exalt you above it. I love my wife, my husband, my children, but I exalt you above them. I love the visions you are giving me, boy. I exalt you above them. One more minute. You are praying to the God of heaven. The one secret behind the strange liftings of man. The one secret of the kingdom behind the mighty and the marvelous hand of God over the life of an individual. You will see God arise for you in ways that will surprise you. He will give you even the desire of nations because you would have become his friend. Hiding no secret from you. Opening you to deep truths in the spirit empowering you in unusual dimensions wisdom beyond the realm of men hallelujah 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 listen when the lord began to speak to me about the thing he's doing in the body of christ in this season how that he's distributing newer and greater levels of grace God is trusting people with wealth you have never seen. See, let me tell you this. This is not going to be about business alone. I understand principles of value, but this one is God trusting people, seeing that I, my last treasurer betrayed me, that I'm still looking for more. And now you are saying, Lord, I will be a faithful steward, and God will give you what is equivalent to the wealth of nations. There are levels of anointings, that will make men will walk like gods upon the earth it is true that their words become like the word of god spectacular manifestations of his power that you look at them you know that this is a man backed by a strange altar with blood dripping on it that we will stop being storytellers in the body of christ 
and indeed will be proof producers even by the spirit the secret beyond fasting beyond prayer is death there is nothing in my life today i submit to you by the grace of god that i cannot give god there is nothing in my life today that i cannot drop at the altar nothing the worst that can happen to me in this life is that i die and even in death we have cheated it already in victory Please, everyone, in one more minute before I pray for you, I want you to rededicate your life again. I'm not insulting you. I know your spiritual experience, but rededicate your life afresh. Don't say, I'm not a sinner. I'm not. Rededicate your life. Lord, I hand it. It's a handover service again. Shida shila saba zubra di kateski anahasia. Krate bali kata zige de bela haski anda bragatus katia. Impreke shabarakus katila barante kapriata hasia. I rededicate my life. I rededicate my life. I rededicate my heart. Everything. One more minute. Just, just pour your, I rededicate everything. For some of you, you are even saying, Lord, let's start afresh again. I don't know the name of what I've been doing, but I can, I can, I can be sure by this message that I've not been serious. Lord, I'm willing to start afresh again. It's better to start afresh than to keep roaming around in pride and ignorance. I can start afresh. We're wrapping up. That's why you came to church. Rededicate yourself. Hallelujah. Now, listen to me. Let me tell you this. I don't mean to insult you, but the way many of us live our lives, it is proof that we do not yet acknowledge the authority of Jesus over our lives. We are the masters of our own will. You do anything you want to do. Um, he that strives for mastery is temperate in all things. Are we together? You cannot live your life anyhow. Anything that just comes into your mind, you do it. No, it's not done that way. And I know when you speak like this, most people feel, oh, this is a liberal society. We have, well, you can choose to believe what you want to believe. But I am telling you, if it is the God of the Bible you want to walk with, it says the love of God constrains us. Are we together? So don't, don't try to modernize Christianity. Don't try to modernize. I've told you, I'm both new and old school. It depends on what you are calling old and what you are calling new. Nobody lives what works. This is a word of caution because thank God for westernization, thank God for technology, but many of us have become victims of these things. There is an, an unusual lust for comfort and lawlessness and liberty that is, there is no constraint. Anything goes. It's a social world. I tell you, you will not do business with God that way. I don't insult your pedigree. The choice is yours. But if it is the God of heaven, you must be prepared to go back and say, Lord, I am ready to subscribe to the constraint that brings mastery. Even in the secular, those who are champions are constrained. There are many things they want to do, but they are not given the liberty to. By reason of what they seek, who for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross be careful many of us are jumping into all kinds of things no restraint no constraint no nothing you don't care after all i'm just a christian after all this one will happen i don't study my bible i don't care i don't pray i don't care no nothing oh i'm a christian i just come to church no sir no sir
all those who have written history that we are we, we we are benefited from them today go and find out the price that they paid i'm speaking to us one more minute before we pray i have to tell you this because most believers you don't like hearing what i'm saying but i love you most times when you say things like this believers become offended because they feel you just preach and leave me to live my life anyhow i promise you by god whether it's god or satan you are serving you live your life anyhow you will not go far with any of them constrain is related to mastery you must be able to constrain yourself can you pray that one prayer lord Grant me the grace that I will be able to constrain my life for the sake of the place you are taking me to. Relationships you need to cut away from. People you need to cut away from. Things you need to cut away from. He that strives for mastery is not crowned unless he strives lawfully. Le Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6 says, This is the thing that the Lord command that you should do, and the glory of the Lord shall appear to you. Whether you are lying down, kneeling, let me just speak over your life. You don't have to lift your hands, just believe and take it by faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray and I declare over your life, the power to lay it down, I decree and declare, may that grace be imparted upon you now. The power to lay down not just your finances, to lay down your ego, to lay down your intellect, to enthrone Christ above anything and everyone in your life. May that grace rest upon you now. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. There are many of you who by prophecy, you are supposed to have entered certain realms. Realms of mastery, realms of prosperity, realms of advancement. But simply because you have not subscribed to this sacrifice of total surrender, you have not given God a chance to move you. By reason of your surrender tonight, may God speedily bring you into those realms. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anyone and anything in your life that will not allow you to surrender wholly to God, I take them out of your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray for you. Whoever has laughed at you based on your sacrifice and your dedication towards God, in the name of Jesus, help them please. I pray by the power that raised Christ from the dead, may God use the strange results you will bring upon your life to answer them back. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please let me encourage you, as you go back home, go and edit the things you listen to. Go and edit the things in your house. Don't say it does not matter for God's sake. You must culture yourself and trust God for grace to give you a new beginning. Let me make the altar call. Our time is fast spent. There's no need cajoling you after a cry and a prayer for sacrifice. You are saying, Apostle, this message tonight is for me. I have violated the first law. I cannot say for sure I have surrendered everything. I may be inside, I may be outside, across the balcony, but I want you to give me a chance with Jesus. Some of you may be saying, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus Christ. Wherever you are, I'm going to count one to five. Please, let's minimize movement and allow those who need to come out to come out. We're wrapping up already. Wherever you are, make sure you don't sit back. Nobody will force you, but this is a decision between you and Jesus. Young and old, rich or poor, male or female, I begin my counting one to five. Run to the front like there's fire on the mountain. One. Koinonia, let's celebrate them as they come. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. Give him a chance to have a new beginning with your life. If you're coming, please hurry up. Run to Jesus. Two. Seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, the Bible says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. 
and to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Three, are you coming? Please clear the way for them. Koinonia, celebrate them. Four. I count five and then we'll begin the prayer. All the overflows, please make sure that you move to your screen and all our viewers following. I'm about to pray with them. You are there in your home, whatever nation of the earth. Here is your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. Thank you, all of you who are out here. Please may I request that you lift your right hand high above your head. Please say this after me. Let it be loud and let it be clear. Say, Lord Jesus, tonight I have heard your word. I have seen the need to surrender my all. I ask you, Jesus, to come into my heart, to be the Lord of my life, the Savior of my soul, the King of my destiny. I ask that you forgive my sins. I receive you as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I receive eternal life into my spirit. From tonight, I declare that I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never in the name of Jesus Christ. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you. No one is able to draw these precious people except by your spirit. They have come acknowledging your lordship over their life. By the authority of scripture, I declare your sins forgiven. And I decree and declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over your life. In the mighty and marvelous name of Jesus, I declare that you are recipients of the life of God. You go from glory to glory. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. By this, I pray that you be grounded and established in righteousness. You go from glory to glory and grace to grace. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for making this bold decision. May I request that you follow the counselors. They are waving their hands just at my right, which is your left. All of you in concert, please do well to follow them. They'll have a word with you just within a minute or two, and then you'll be back. Let's celebrate them. Thank you for your patience. Um, just two very quick announcements, and we're done for tonight. Hallelujah. This is from the security department. The security department is open to absorb new members. Um, the opening closes on the 24th, 24th of April. That's a Sunday by 12.59. Um, so all interested persons, you want to be part of our security department. You are a military man, paramilitary, or you are trained in and around security intelligence. You work with the DSS. You know, anything that relates to security. You want to be part of this department. You can wait at the PR stand or meet any of the security officials, but preferably the PR stand, and there will be a few people to receive you and communicate further with you. And then the media department, our media department is now open for new members. All interested persons can send their applications to Koinonia Media Abuja at one, as one word, Koinonia Media Abuja at Yahoo or Gmail. Is it Gmail or Yahoo? Okay, so you work with, I think I have Gmail here, gmail.com. Please correct it. Let's know what obtains so that um, application closes on the 24th of April. And if you are here and you're already determined to join them, you can also wait at the PR desk just outside the main auditorium and um, a few people will come to attend to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now next week, as we, it's a two-part series. We'll wrap up um, the two-part series next week. I'll be teaching you some other things, some other laws of the kingdom, and then we'll have the time to pray. But we're going to be fasting. Please discipline yourself. You can fast and break maybe from three because I know that most people from 10, 11, there are people already here waiting. Um, you can plan it. So Sunday, discipline yourself. You will not die. We'll fast. Children can fast to 12, and then that's enough for them. Adults, at least, if you are serious with God, you should be able to stretch to maybe 3 o'clock, except you're a nursing mother or there's a medical um, case so that we can prepare our spirits and then we come for what God is doing. I assure you that as you submit yourself to what God is doing, 
you will keep watching your life go from glory to glory. For the Bible declares that they go from glory, strength to strength, as many as appear before the Lord in Zion. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you. Please rise up on your feet as we wrap up. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Let your weak beginning be a profitable one in Jesus' name. May the mighty and marvelous hand of God rest upon you. I declare upon you that the lines have fallen for you in pleasant places. You go from glory to glory. Your life becomes a representation of the grace and the power of God. In Jesus' name, I pray. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forever. Amen. God bless you and see you on Sunday. Take over, Jehovah, I have come to the end of myself. Take over, Jehovah, I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah, hallelujah, I have come to the end of myself. Take over, Jehovah, I have come to the end of myself. Take over, Jehovah, I have come to the end of my take over, Jehovah. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka Nakata Branda Katekapos Tete Branda Katapa Kotosko to break a take and the Kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.